Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares. We've got uh, two very special guests tonight. We've got in the house Bryce from Bryce Talks Metal. We've got Joey, otherwise known as Spaghetti Lee, longtime viewer of the channel and Hudson Valley resident. We got Chris Allo in the house, Butch Jones, our center square, Sydney Taylor. We've got Ooh. Nick Franco, Steve Keeler, and Ryan Scow. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for joining us all tonight. Uh, tonight's topic. This is uh, a topic suggested by none other than Sydney. Ooh. Today we're going to talk about our five favorite instrumental rock or metal songs. And spoiler alert, two of Sydney's are going to be Rush songs. You heard it here first. <laughs> no, here. Just I kidding. Know, I know one of hers for sure. Just kidding. So I have uh, to cross that off. I have to cross that off mine. Okay. I'll fill it <laughs> out. Don't know. hold your breath. <laughs> So we're going to go, uh, everybody's going to do one pick at a time. We're going to go round and round till we get to our, our, our number one. So uh, we're going to start at the bottom, work our way up to the top. Ryan, you've got this thing. You're always in the upper top echelon of the squares here. How does it work out? I don't, I don't know. know. It, it's every single time. I don't know what it is. I always still feel. Well, like are you, it, are you like here uh, before everybody else? Is, are you here like He's first? He's always the I first usually, one. I want you to just let it sit. Yeah. So I might be then that's, that's it. You know, cause the later that you come in, the that you're at the the bottom of the screen so you're always at the you're top at the, right look at the, the zoom screen. draw so to speak so oh, can't yeah. you just shift them around though like a uh, tic-tac-toe just try to move them <laughs> feet don't you, somebody have like the <laughs> the admin like yeah it doesn't work that way unfortunately no <laughs> oh well that's all right so uh so everybody's going to start off with their number five we're going to start with the spaghetti lee we're going to this is the order we're going to go oh. spaghetti lee's going first then we're going to do bryce then chris then butch then sydney then nick then Ryan, then Steve, then myself, and then we'll go around and around and around. So, uh, all right. So, Spaghetti, what do you got for us? Number all one. right. Very cool. First of all, I didn't want to go too obscure. I mean, when you mentioned it was going to be instrumentals, I mean, I have entire albums of instrumentals, entire genres of instrumentals. Yeah, so but is your, pick, kind of, is your pick, man? I, go, go crazy. Shit. Okay. Well, I didn't go all that crazy, but I, uh, my first one I'm going to say is the very last track on the very last album of Stevie Ray Vaughan before he died is a track called Riviera Paradise. Beautiful. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It looked like Stevie was sort of going into a, a jazz kind of a, um, you know, deviating away from the really hardcore bluesy stuff. Um, he is a monster guitar player. I don't have to tell anybody, but if Stevie wanted to go into that, uh, Alan Holdsworth, uh, Papathini, Al Demiola sort of a world, he would have definitely have held his own. And it's an absolutely gorgeous song. And that would be my first pick is Steve Ray Von Riviera Paradise. Great, great. Yeah, awesome. We're off to well, a good yeah. start. All right, Bryce, what do you got for us? All right, uh, so my number five is going to be Into the Infernal Regions of the Ancient Cult by Inquisition, uh, my favorite black metal band of all time. It's just a two-man group, which at this time they did have a bass player, but uh, after this they didn't. But this song, self-titled from their debut, super thrashy. They did start off in Colombia as a thrash band in the late 80s and then like uh, transitioned to the more black metal, which at this point they're still very thrashy, uh, just a heavy, dirty, aggressive, very evil sounding song. And they take a lot of snippets on this album and like uh, put them into the album from like an old horror movie called Inquisition from the 70s. It's like a Spanish horror movie. I know you guys are a lot into that. I don't know if you might know it, but uh, super cool song. Love the atmosphere. So that's my number five. And probably their shortest song title ever. Oh yeah, they, their stuff is a mouthful to say. It's crazy. Cool. All right, Chris. All right. All right. My number five, uh, it's from a record with an awesome album cover, and it's uh, definitely a record that helped uh, break this band. It's been a concert staple for ever since uh, it came out, uh, Coast to Coast from the Love Drive record. Uh, and I, I do love this cover. Uh, I interviewed uh, it, it, the album. Uh, the album is credited, or the song rather, is credited uh, to Rudy Shanker as the sole writer uh, but Michael Shanker told me his brother is a fucking liar and a thief <laughs> and stole everything from him. His look, his guitars, uh, and lying. coast to coast. He ain't lying, though. He, he didn't he's, hold back. He, he got so he. I didn't even ask him. He got so heated. He's like, Christopher, have you seen the new version of Love Drive, the expanded edition? I'm like, nope. He's like, I'm not even in it. 
I, I only got to the old cheap one, but yeah, he, he lost, Michael Schenker lost his shit. And then when he interviewed Rudy, I asked him and Rudy was just like, oh, my brother, he's crazy. So um, that's the story behind this, but it's still, whoever wrote it, I don't give a fuck. It's a great song, uh, uh, Coast to Coast. <laughs> Well, you know what? I'm going to piggyback on you, Chris, because anyone that has seen Shanker in the last couple of years knows that he plays that song. Yep, and, absolutely. And, 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 and if his brother actually wrote it, I can he guarantee he wouldn't be playing it. 100%. So, Team Shanker. Team Michael, yep. I should say. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, with that, Butch, what's your pick? Now, I hate that we're... I, I can't do... I can't put him in order. I don't... I don't. This is going to be tough to even come back and try to figure out what That's number fine. one would be. Because it's, it's hard. It's hard enough to try to pick five. It's this is uh, like Spaghetti said, man, you can go There's so many different ways you could go to try to pick them. So uh, I'm picking a little bit of everything and I'm looking at my list here right now, trying to figure out what to make five. And that's that's almost impossible. Um, but I'm, I'll go I'll go. With, I'll, I'll save my other one my, for my honorable mention here. So I'm going to go off the reservation a little bit. Um, stick with Michael Shanker. So I'm going with an assault attack. The last song called Ulcer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mikey rips it up on that one, boy. Yeah, he does. It's a whole <laughs> lot of wah wah action that you know that cock wow thing that he's famous for, the filter, and he just rips it up. And that's absolutely, without a doubt, my favorite Michael Shanker group record, the Salt Attack, uh, the Great Grand Bonnet. I've told that story here before, being a kid in '82 and seeing it in Record World, seeing the cover, and just there was something with him holding that flying V with the volcano behind him. I'm like, there's got to be something to this. Look at this. Um, so yeah, so number five for me, uh, as hard as it is to make it number five, is uh, Michael Schenker Group Ulcer. Great choice. <clears throat> Great choice. All right, Sydney. Yeah. All right. Um, so like Butch mentioned, this was really hard. Um, and even though I was the one who picked it, um, I still found myself struggling <laughs> in trying to narrow this down. Um, but number five, I'm actually gonna pick something that I don't, I don't think at least I don't think is the the norm um and maybe not the Black Sabbath song everyone would be thinking about for this but it's off of my favorite Black Sabbath album and I always thought that this was such a beautiful instrumental from the second I heard it and that's Fluff off of Sabbath Bloody Sabbath and it's like I said not probably the Black Sabbath song that somebody would pick that is <laughs> an instrumental that's super memorable for them but um I, I love that album and that to me is one of just one of the prettiest pieces of music from a band that you wouldn't really do like a really pretty acoustic, <laughs> you know, instrumental track. Um, and actually one of my friends um, is getting married next year and that's going to be the song that she walks down the aisle to, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, I, I love that song. And so um, that's my number five. Very cool. Wow. Played at a wedding. Yeah. Chris, have you ever heard of that before? I have not. I have not. That's interesting. That's very cool. Though. Yeah. Tell her we, we said that's a great idea. Yeah, I, when she told me, I was really shocked. I, I was, she's really into like rock, but I, I was just not expecting that. She told me she was like fluffed by Black Sabbath. And I was like, holy shit. So <laughs> I will let her know that you guys approve as well. Cool. Yeah, thumbs up. All right, on to our bartender from the other night, Mr. Franco. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, I didn't oh. get a shot, by the way. Let me just throw that out there. Oh shit! I saw you guys. I saw you getting the, the shots over. I came over and, and was uh, talking to you guys over there. And nope, let it be known, everyone, that Nick Franco, my neighbor, did not get me a shot of their. You all put the shot, Nick. Cuervo, Cuervo. All right, number one, I'll get you next time. I promise. Number two, the problem with me is that much like some sort of a like a pack rat animal, I only know like the way from where I'm standing to the bar and back. I don't know any other ways. <laughs> I just knew how to get back to work. <laughs> I was hammered. Um, that was so much fun. But uh, yeah, so I, I don't know what order to put this in either, but there's so many good ones. I was in the same boat. So I decided I'll just gonna, like the first one I'm gonna give, um, and Sydney, I know I'm stealing this from you, but I'm gonna go with Rush. Uh, <laughs> uh, La Villa Strangiato, because it's, it's the most, probably the most mind blowing piece of music I've ever heard. Uh, that didn't have vocals so um it, it i remember hearing it a very long time ago and just i just couldn't believe that uh human beings could do this and um it turns out i read whatever little background information on it, i'm sure fans know i guess they they tried to record it in one take and they couldn't they tried really hard to and i guess and i read that they spent more time recording that song than they did 
the entire uh, fly by night album. I don't know if that's true, but um, so yeah, it's obviously such an amazing. Uh, I love the bass, so you can hear the bass so good in there. And I don't know what else to say about it except that it, it just it's it seems like AI did like they're just they're just so amazing. So uh, that's probably the most mind blowing instrumental that I that I know and love. So that's my pick. Yep. <clears throat> Full disclosure to everybody and everybody watching, that would have automatically been on my list, but I knew either one or multiple people were going to pick it. So I said, I'm just going to off today. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's yeah, almost well, like well, a given, right? For me. I yeah. figured everyone was going to do that. So I could pick it because no one was going to pick it. There you go. <laughs> Smart man. Smart man. <laughs> yep. All right, Ryan, back to you. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stay in Canada for this band. Uh, also, I had a hard time picking an order, so I'm just going to, since Nick picked a Canadian band, I'm going to pick a Canadian band. <laughs> it's going to rush, and it be going to letter R. Uh, and it's not Voivod that begins with the letter V. Uh, it's Razor. Uh, so it's the first out, first song from their 1988 album, Violent Restitution. It's called The Martial Arts, but Martial spelled like Martial Amp. See what they did there? Of course. See what they did there? Uh, so it's an instrumental, but it opens with this ridiculous, like, 35-second, like, Bane bursting scream, but there's no there's no lyrics or vocals. Uh, the vocal is Sheepdog just screams, and then the song kicks off. Uh, it's probably their fastest and heaviest record. The whole album just is relentless. It's just like perfect old school nonstop thrash. There's no slow parts. There's no. Uh, it's just kind of how you want a good thrash album to be in that sense. And the, this song is like the perfect way to kick off a thrash album. It just kicks in. It hits the accelerator all the way to the floor. Goes to 8,000 miles an hour, just right all the way through, and then goes on for about three minutes, and then the album kicks off proper. Uh, but it's just a nonstop monster thrash song. Goes to riff after riff after riff. Uh, Dave Carlos, that that dude's wrist must be man. I don't know what kind of exercises he did, but his his fucking wrist to play this shit that fast back then was uh, impressive. So I was trying to think of like uh, good thrash metal instrumentals. There's a few of them, but not a lot. Uh, you guys might pick some of them, but my, this is definitely my favorite one. So I'm going with. Martial Arts by Razor. <clears throat> cool. Nice. All right, Steve. Right. Coming in at number five with a tie. Emerson Lake and Palmer, Peter Gunn, and Santana, Soul Sacrifice. And of course, I'm going to go with Soul Sacrifice of Santana's self titled album from 1969. And I had to throw ELP because I just realized they weren't on my list. So sorry, I cheated a little bit. But I uh, love that. I love that version, though. That's that's awesome. Oh, isn't it amazing? Yep. And uh, one of the best, Carlos is one of my one of my not my gods, not metal gods. Well, I meant ELP, not Carlos. Oh, you don't like Carlos? <laughs> no, nothing against Carlos. He's not one of my guys, but the yeah. ELP. The e oh, that ELP. Yeah. Um, I, I Hold down could have been in there too, but I, yeah. I went with Peter Gunn. That's Hold good. down. Yep. Very Killer. Cool. So, Steve, that's why I asked you before we started taping about the Woodstock thing, because that, that was also my number five. So I was like, I had a feeling you and I were going to be on the same page with Soul Sacrifice. So I'll pick something different here. Could have been... Now, the, the, the who didn't do overture at Woodstock, did they? Oh, did they? Huh? That could be another one from Woodstock. <laughs> they were definitely doing it in 1970. Yeah. No, they, 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 did it, they did it in 69. All right. So I'm going to replace Soul Sacrifice here with, I'm going to go with the first Journey album, self titled for a song called Topaz. Ah, oh, so good. For those of you watching who only know Steve Perry, journey and you know all that which is all great uh go listen to this first album it's half vocals half uh, instrumental greg riley does the vocals some scorching like fusiony guitar stuff going on here uh topaz i could have picked kahatek as well which is also amazing but uh, i think killer, topaz yeah. is my favorite yeah just amazing neil sean guitar work the drums are incredible uh it's, it's kind of funky it's uh, absolutely kick-ass song so that's uh, my first pick from the first journey album back to spaghetti um i'm gonna I, you know i didn't put him in much of an order either and i have to cross off villa strangiata because that is definitely one of my favorites and i knew it was gonna get called but um <laughs> let me just go i can keep it simple with iron maiden genghis khan man 
on the killer's record the drumming on there is just amazing it's my favorite maiden album of all time um i sort of kind of gave up on maiden after power sleeve a little bit i've been trying i admit i've been trying i'm just not not getting it but Iron Maiden Killers is one of my favorite albums ever, and that Genghis Khan is just incredible. So Iron Maiden Genghis Khan. Nice. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Bryce? Nice. Um, all right, so my number four, anybody that's seen my channel before knows I'm pretty much the biggest Megadeth fanboy like ever. Just love all their stuff. They're my favorite band. So I'm trying to decide between, of course, wait, Into wait, the Lungs wait of Hell. Minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's up, what's up? Do you like Risk? I think it's pretty good for what it is, honestly. Man, I, I'll defend Kool-Aid anything. Man. Holy oh. shit. I, I rate no it. Fans, I rate it a, I give it a six out of ten. Six out of ten. Ooh, that's the highest score out of this panel. I think, hey, I think hey, Prince, Prince of Darkness is a great song. It is. I just had to ask. I just had to ask. Hey, that's cool. So, but I, yeah, I'm actually going to go with Dialect of Chaos, which is the opener to end game. I think this is one of the best modern thrash albums by a classic band. It's the uh, introduction of Chris Broderick, who is a shred machine. Oh, yeah. And he's introducing himself here to shredding all over this song back and forth with uh, Dave. Sets the tone for the whole album, which is just one of their heaviest and most aggressive. Just amazing stuff. So got to go with that at number four. Cool. You know, Bro- Broderick is, was, is such a great player, but the only problem I have with him is that he smiled way too much in Mega Death yeah. Guitar. I've, I've heard you say that before. There's no yeah. smiling in metal. You can't <laughs> smile like that. <laughs> hey, he's, I'd be smiling too if I was in the best metal band of all time, you know? <laughs> you know, uh, Butch, though, I got a thing for you. Dave Murray has never frowned in his life, ever. His day was born. Whenever you see Maiden, he's got this big fucking shit eating grin on his face every time. <laughs> Nowadays, so now he's got plenty of money. Maybe back in the early days, he frowned a little bit more. <laughs> oh, you go back to the earliest photos, and he was the first guitarist. Well, he's happy. He was, yeah, he was, he was, yeah, he was the happy one. I will say, I'll give you that. But he didn't grin like Broderick. Broderick was just like, I can't believe I'm in Mega Death. <laughs> struggled all those years. I finally made it. Woo! <laughs> just teasing you, Bryce. Just teasing. Yeah, no, I got you. Yeah, I was, I was honestly, I'll say, I was super devastated when they quit. I remember I was sitting in class. Him and uh, Drover quit back to back days. I was like, "What the hell, man!" I, I wanted to cry. <laughs> Books off the desk. It's gonna be tough being a, like a diehard Megadeth fan because you know none of those lineups are ever gonna last. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. All right, Chris, back to you. All right, mine's a new one, like really new from like like four or five days ago. Uh, it's my my all time favorite guitar player, and uh, it's a really great tune. It's a great riff. Uh, it's Iomi. Uh, with Scent of Dark, which is apparently a song he released to uh, release some cologne, which uh, the press release made me laugh because the press release said Tony Iommi is bringing back the aromatic reminiscence of rock from the 60s and 70s. So to me, I laughed. I'm like, okay, so I guess this is this thing's going to smell like patchouli and B.O., but uh, I, I was absolutely going to buy the cologne until I looked up the pricing and it was 260 bucks for a regular bottle and uh, 600 bucks for an autographed bottle. So I'm just going to stick with my $20 bottles of Batman cologne. Uh, so I'm just going to keep smelling like a crime fighter instead of leather and hellfire like Tony Iommi. But I think it's a great song. And uh, that's my. I got. I haven't listened to it yet because I yeah. thought it was probably oh, here. Like it. I like it. It sounds like it sounds like it could be off off of thirteen. Uh, you know, he's got he's got another guitarist. He's got a cello player and, and uh, a violinist. And I, I dug wow. it. I, I really liked it. I mean, I know I'm biased. Well, I, I, I don't always biased. drink the Kool Aid with Sabbath. You know, <laughs> yeah. if something shitty like I, I Never Say Die, I'll I'll say it. So, um, but yeah, I, I like this. A Tony Iommi cologne that doesn't smell like decomposition is just not metal. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, we're going to have to go back in a few months and, and check the records and see who sold more of his or KK's. Yes, but you know what does the KK Ooh. one cost? It's got to be cheaper than that. Yes, I think it's cheaper than that. I don't think he had that force. He, he didn't have that foresight to charge a lot of money. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, yeah, I, I thought the Iomi cologne would be like a hundred bucks, maybe a hundred fifty bucks. And when when you watch the video, Pete, there's a part where he's like playing pool, and he's like shooting pool between the two bottles. And I know oh, it's two different bottles, so I, 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 I looked it up, and I'm like, holy you, you fuck! Good out of me. Six hundred. 
The trend six hundred bucks. Now, like it's, get, now it's cologne. You get, now it's cologne. I, say, yeah, I was gonna paid. say it was it was wine, right? For a little yeah. while, like all the wine. rock bands, everybody was doing wine, and yeah. then there was lots of bands that did beer, and right oh, now it's yeah. cologne. I see KKs for fifty bucks. So bourbon. See, no, right. Fifty. Right. Listen, fifty bucks. Yeah, that was that's a little bit more. That's a little bit more than back then. I could I could do fifty bucks. Right. Actually, I love you, man. Fifty bucks, six hundred bucks. No thanks. That's crazy. That's a lot. And you don't know what it smells like. Right. Well, it does oh. smell like aromatic reminiscence of the 60s and 70s. Okay. Whatever that means. Oh, Chris splurges and buys shit his... Right there. Chris splurges Jeep and buys his... What? You done? I'm trying to say something. <laughs> I ain't go. Go ahead, go ahead. Go. I said, that's some Gene Simmons shit. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> $600 <laughs> perfume. I could see Gene doing that, but I didn't know Tony was going to do it. Taking a page from Kiss. Chris spends six hundred dollars and gets the bottle and gets it. It's like this smells familiar, and then he picks up the Batman cologne. Right, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! Are you Could serious? Be. Could be. <laughs> Could be. Tony Iommi. And then you realize that Tony Iommi is Batman. So there you go. There you go. I've never seen him in the same place at the same work. time. That's right. I've never seen him in the same place. Just saying. <laughs> Bruce Wayne Iommi. Oh my god. All right, Butch. Uh, so, me, so uh, yeah, I have La Villa Strangiato for in my uh, five year too. So um, I'll take that out and then I'll, I'll move up what I took out to make my number six um, will be Steve Vai's Blue Powder. Ooh. Um, I have that from uh, a guitar player magazine, Flexi Disc. Flexi Disc, yes, I had that too. Yep. From like, uh, I, yeah, actually, it was before he was in David Lee Roth's band. So, like, 84? 84, 85, yep. Yeah, so it was before he was with Roth. So, yep. um, that's, that, man, that's great tone, great phrase. And this, this young Steve Vai, which is just still being that Vai, but he didn't go off the deep end being eccentric Vai. Um, but it's, that's just a, another great, beautiful song. So, yeah, I'll, I'll use Steve Vai's Blue Powder as my number four. My old, my old flexi disc got like a wrinkle in it. So when I would go play it on the uh, on the turntable, it would jump up and down. I'm like, oh, man. <clears throat> oh, God. He best things, right? All right, back yep. to sit back. All right. Um, my number four, I'm going to pick an Iron Maiden song as well, but not Genghis Khan. I'm gonna Don't do you do it. Song. Don't you do I'm it. <laughs> you got to let me say it. Do it. Um, I'm picking Transylvania. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> from the debut record um and i like don't get me wrong i love all the stuff with bruce dickinson that's like my favorite maiden but i really do love the first record with paul diano and th there's something about i feel like um that album especially with the playing and, and you see it in that instrumental is it's about as young and hungry as that that band was it was just you there's something like about it that just like gets me so pumped up every time i listen to that album and some of my favorite songs are from that record. So, um, say that again. They were youthful. They were yeah, kids. it was. You know? It was just they were so young and hungry, and there was just something so powerful. And I'm not saying there isn't about the the later main stuff because I I love all of those classic albums, and those are my favorites. But um, I do really love the debut record. So um, it's really high energy instrumental that just fits on that album so great. And um, yeah, that's my that's my number four. Cool. Choice. I forgot about that one actually. Shout out to Dennis Stratton. Yeah, right. Dennis Stratton because he was uh, yeah. a great song. It really is. All right, back to Mr. Franco. From the context of Butch's comments, I feel like I'm about to steal his his uh do his it. God damn well, there's it. not that many left more maiden instrumentals. I know, I know. Should <laughs> I do it, Butch, or should I leave it to you? Yeah, go ahead and take it, it. God damn it. <laughs> you only saw them it. live about 30 years before I did. <laughs> Um, you really literally lost, lost for words <laughs> yep yeah i got it i got it i was thinking about all of the maiden um well all the few maiden instrumentals and i wonder like it's funny that was is am i correct was that their last instrumental that they ever really until did? the new record i think there's an isn't there an instrument on the new record um well no no sure but there's that. instrumental breaks that are longer than all three instrumentals. yeah but not, not a not a tried and true instrumental That's yeah, true. But, yeah. Not a instrumental. you know i was looking online and a lot of people were like shitting on lost for words i don't understand why you know the um they're wrong the, band, the iron maidens they played it over the summer and i was like right yeah and i was like they played uh, twice and they played it both times we saw them and they kicked yeah it. yeah and, and I, I remember it was sounded so good live but you know this isn't it 
instrumentals should take you somewhere emotionally, yeah. right? Because they're 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 providing. Uh, it shouldn't be looked at as filler, and the instruments have to do the talking in the place of the singer. And right. again, not being a musician, but you'll I want you to talk about it because you'll you'll explain it better as, as a musician. But uh, the the fact that the, it comes and goes like in waves, like it's just such a great. Uh, and Steve's playing on it is amazing. And I think I read that they follow they inadvertently or, in, or advertently followed some sort of classical format like sonata uh allegro i don't know i see this is where my knowledge falls but i didn't know that about it but, i didn't know that it, it makes sense yeah that they it followed some somebody provided like this unbelievable explanation about how it, it mirrors classical music in a way hmm. and uh i just think it's fucking amazing i always loved it i always played the entire power slave album without skipping anything because it's almost as close to perfection as you can get so uh, yeah, sorry, Butch. I got to pick that one. I have I had two choices. I had I had my chance, but I was saving it for later. But that's okay. It's a it's a great one. Yeah. The classical music thing. I mean, you look at classical music. That was the that was a medal of its day. So absolutely, it was. Damn right. All right, Ryan. All right. Well, I was gonna I was gonna pick Genghis Khan, but since it was said, I'll pick something else. Uh, so I'm gonna stay in Canada. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go off off the reservation here. Uh, a well-known band, band that's been around a very long time, put out a lot of albums. Uh, they're well known within their style, which is uh, industrial, which is a form of rock and metal. Uh, you know, a little different. So the band is the uh, from Vancouver, Canada. It's uh, Frontline Assembly. Oh and, shit! Uh, wow. This is their 1999 album, Implode. Wow. And it has a song on it called Synthetic Forms, which is. Uh, so there's no vocals, but it uses a lot of samples from the movie Event Horizon with Lawrence Fishburne, which is cool because it's a cool, creepy movie. So there are all these samples of Lawrence Fishburne. Like, you know, if you've ever seen the movie, it's a sci-fi horror movie uh, in space. And it fits the song. It's like an eight and a half minute song. It's just really creepy. It builds up slowly, starts off with like a drum beat. Uh, very electronic. I'm not going to say dancey, but some of their stuff kind of is. And this song kind of is, but... Man, the way it just builds up and then like the keyboards come in and, you know, the way they use the samples to kind of create this uh, kind of ominous mood. Oh, it's great. Such a good song. One of the best songs they ever did. So, yeah, I saw that on my shelf. And I'm like, man, I got to pick that. It's just such a freaking good song. So, uh, Brian, you know what this is? What, is? what is that? Oh, is that this, his keyboard? This is a key of, off Bill Lieb's keyboard when I saw Frontline Assembly. And at the end of the show, he smashed his keyboard into a thousand pieces. <laughs> And I that's an expensive one. thing to smash. That's kind of like, expensive. Yeah, that's man. unusual. Yeah. I think that it was a special show, show, and I think he probably just wanted to do it especially for us. So here's some oh. frontline assembly shrapnel. Wow. <laughs> I don't see him, but I was I was not at that show because I would have remembered a keyboard getting annihilated. <laughs> Were you in the <laughs> hospital? Something that happens all the time. Yeah, that's that's a you know night of expensive chord keyboard or whatever he was playing. Yeah, that's uh, but that's they're off. Awesome. Good pick. Good I'm pick. going with that. Frontline Assembly, Synthetic yeah. Forms, and this awesome freaking album, 99. Cool. All right, Steve, back to you. Four, I'm going to uh, – I changed my list a little bit, as Butch did and as someone else did, because I had La Villa Strangiato, of course, on the list. So I'll leave that off. But to mention, uh, moves, shuffle things around a little bit. I'm going with – Tales of the Unexpected off the album of the same name by Frank Marino. Good boy. Oh, nice. Good boy. 1979. Uh, <clears throat> nice. Great jamming tune. It just drives and drives through. It's very, a lot of jazz. It's a little jazzy. It's a lot of progressive in there. And it's just one of, one of his finest albums, I think, Tales of the Unexpected. And I can remember sitting in a room that looked just like this in that same house listening to that album over and over with the black lights on and a couple beers and maybe some other additives. But good stuff. <laughs> Frank what Marino. kind of additives would they have been, Steve? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like how Steve moves away from the microphone as he said. Describe <laughs> <laughs> those additives. Like that's just a limitation, Steve. You're okay. <laughs> yeah, you can swear on here. That's right. What's his name? Didn't show up tonight, Rich, right? We can talk about stuff like that. <laughs> oh, man. That's so, a good pick. Frank I, Marino, totally, uh, I totally forgot about Frank, man. I could have picked a couple of his as well. Yeah, right. Definitely. It's a lot. There's a lot to think about sometimes. And I didn't get started thinking about it till like seven o'clock. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nothing like waiting until the last minute. <laughs> I had a lot that I was busy the last few days. Pulled out a good one though. I give him credit. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. That's I was I was hoping that Butch was going to pick the theme from Mannix, but uh, he hasn't done it yet. <laughs> I don't know who did it. <laughs> That's what we could do. We could do a uh, crime detective theme. That would be a good one. or TV Why theme shows. In TV theme shows. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool. Henry Mancini did. Henry Mancini did your Peter Gunn. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right, I'm going to kind of piggyback on uh, Butch's last pick. I'm going to go with Mr. Vi also, uh, but I'm going to go with For the Love of God. Yeah, that's a good on this, which is just a Herculean track. Um, I never get tired of hearing that. That to me, that's his finest moment ever. And uh, you know, some of his albums are a little spotty, I'd say, but usually there's a couple of gems on all of them. I think if you take like all the best of each of Steve Vai's albums and put it in one album, you have like one of the greatest albums ever. But um, this is a strong album, I think. But for the love of God, it's just kind of it's really cool because it's kind of slow and bluesy and emotional, but they're shredding it in as well. And man, his just his technique and his tone is just incredible on in the song. And when you go see him play it live, it's just wow. like an otherworldly experience. Yep. So uh had to make my list for the love of God, Steve I back to spaghetti. All right. So we're all familiar with the Black Sabbath tune Rat Salad, right? So in 2018, the band High on Fire put out a two-song EP. On one side was a cover of Celtic Frost into the Crips Rays really really killer and the other side they did a variation of black sabbath's rat salad they called it bat salad now it's similar in tone it's similar in composition but it's high on fire so it's doomier it's darker it's faster it's heavier it's just crazy and if you haven't heard it i highly recommend you guys check it out it's on a 2018 ep by high on fire and it's called bat salad not rat salad and it's super super cool Oh, and uh, it's a, it's about as it's about as obscure as I get because I have my I've been changing my list up here too, and then I got some Vi and some Zappa and some stuff coming up. But that uh, it is brutal, and the Into Crips of Rays is really brutally fast. I mean, if you guys aren't familiar with High on Fire, they are about as heavy as it gets nowadays. They're really really killer, and that EP is just awesome, really really cool. So Bat Salad, not Rat Salad, Bat Salad by High on Fire. Really cool. 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 I'm gonna have to go check that out. Yeah, I never heard that one. Then no, I'll check it out. Cool. All right, Bryce. Cool. All right. So uh, uh, my number three, I'm gonna go with Technical Difficulties by Racer X. Oh, good boy, dude. Paul Gilbert is just an insane guitar player. Pretty underrated. I think that he should be up there with like the greatest of all time without question. Um, and this is, I'd say it's like when it gets to that climax part of the song, it's almost like Comfortably Numb by Pink Floyd on steroids. Just super majestic and amazing. You got um, Scott Travis there on the drums from Judas Priest and just amazing band, amazing song. One of my favorites ever, uh, Technical Difficulties, number three. Shit, I mean, just with just with the racer X, you could you could run off a whole bunch of instrumentals that are awesome. Yeah, yeah right. Scar Scarified. Yeah. Yep. Good choice. No, Scarified is not instrumental. It starts as instrumental. Mm -hmm. okay. Vocals come in. All right, Chris. I caught my I, I caught myself screwing up. Y R O Angry <laughs> Ripoff. Right. Yeah. You, <laughs> sorry, Chris. That's oh, okay. Um, I'm going. I'm pulling a Nick and a Ryan, and I'm going ultra obscure on this one. Uh, I know nobody's ever heard of this because I keep watching the YouTube count on the videos and it goes up like one or two a day because I'm the only one that keeps watching it. <laughs> but there's this <laughs> band from Canada called Lamb Chop of God and they're the world's first puppet metal band. What? Like, lamp, this... lamp, lamp, like, yeah, lamp, well, you remember, puppet, like, if you're chop. old, you remember the, like the lady with the fucking... <laughs> Yeah, the lady with the lamb chop. The lady with the lamb chop. Yeah, this is lamb chop of God. They don't Sherry sound Lewis. like lamb of God. Sherry it's, Lewis was her name. Sherry Lewis. Yeah, Sherry Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and this is definitely more traditional metal. It's got it's killer guitar riff, and um, it's puppets. The puppets are in the band, and I don't, I don't want to know who's really playing it, um, but they got a Facebook, and they got a. The, the song is called "Bang Your Head," and the whole song is done by puppets. And um, there's like 880 views on this song. And I'm like, this is fucking gold. 
How is this not like watched more? I mean, no. like I watched it ten times last week. I'm It'll the only on one now. looking at this thing. Oh no! Oh no! I'm watching that. Yeah, right that. that's right it. Yeah. Tony, Sydney, I only right and and, and it's a that. there is a voiceover. Yeah. I'm gonna that. Um, you know, and it's like it's like a Richard Simmons kind of in, inspirational kind of dude being like that's Chris Allo and 215 others like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like this. Listen, the video is hysterical. Every time I watch this video, it makes me laugh. It's a bunch of puppets jamming out in a bar and the, you know, they, they smoke weed, they drink orange juice. And in the middle of the song, they make a break to cook pierogies. <laughs> I, I don't understand, <laughs> but it's hysterical and it's a great song. And you know, yeah, we've got our death metal and our progressive this and our Swedish that, but puppet metal <laughs> is, is the new thing. And I'm totally into it. Wow. Well, that's my, uh, yeah, that's my take. Well, you know, you want some views on it by the end of this week, uh, 10,500 yeah. and whatever. We'll, we'll have watched that after they've watched Cause I, I'm ready for him. Chop a God, the tour. Cause do they, do they, do they cut two little holes in the sock to have little horns up on the puppet? Little no, that would metal, be good. I mean, they, but you know, they're, they got little, little, he's got a little drum that. kit and, they got little a little bass and a little guitar and it's it's just killing me that all the posts are like Chris Allo and three others like this. <laughs> <laughs> nobody nobody knows it. I don't know how came I came up with. It. I have no idea. I don't know how, how I stumbled on it. How did you come across these? No people? idea, man. I don't know. It's just one of those weird things, but it <laughs> is funny. Lamb chops, probably. Every <laughs> time I watch it, even though I've seen this thing like fifty times in the last year, it makes me laugh. I mean, and, and, Steve is right, you know, because you never know. Sometimes you go looking for stuff on the Internet and they recommend weird stuff. So you, you yeah. may have been looking up like maybe you were looking up a recipe for lamb chops and, and the algorithm <laughs> like metal. So they kind of listen, I do watch. Stuff. I watch lots of food stuff on YouTube, so it totally could be that <laughs> you're trying to save your soul and look up food. And you're like lamb chop, right. lamb chop up or, or Richard Simmons. <laughs> yeah, it could be, too. But yeah, <laughs> lamb chop a God, bang your head. Check him out from Ottawa. I'm gonna watch. Yeah, hey, the, the first puppet in puppet metal is Ziltoid from Devin Townsend. There you go. All right, well, there we go. Yep. Cool. yep. All right, Butch, back to you. Uh, number three, Frankenstein by Ed, the Edgar Winter Group. And fun fact, that's great. I love that. Ronnie Manchos plays a guitar solo on that. Yes, he does. But when you see the video of it, it is not Ronnie Manchos. Anyone know who's in the video? Anyone ever seen a video before of this song? John Sykes. <laughs> oh, I got a drink. You did it. It wasn't me. Drinking game. Nice. <laughs> I don't have anything. So. Uh, it's uh, Rick Derringer. Rick Derringer's in the video. So if you've ever seen a video, you think that Rick Derringer is actually playing yeah. the guitar stuff, but it's not. It's, it's Ronnie Matros. Yeah, I know Matros is definitely on the album. Yeah. yeah. I think Derringer played live with him. Uh, maybe I believe he did. Sir. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a legendary song right there. Absolutely, awesome. and you know, an Overkill's version of it is killer, just the same. But yeah, you, you can't beat the the original. No, the original it, is, it is a good cover for. Uh, yeah, it is a great movie. cover. Yeah. Cool. They only come out at night, 1972. There you go. Way ahead of its time, but that song, man, god damn. Bam, bam, bam. I had the 45, man. I had the 45 for that one. And the extent, you know, the, the album version with all the keyboards going on and the sound effects sounded like it's you know, coming from outer space and everything. Yeah. It was like, sound like a video game. It was, it's awesome. Yeah, wild stuff. It was on my list. It was on mine too. <laughs> There's always others we can pull out of our hat. That's right. There's so many. There's so many. All right, Sydney, what do you got? Um, all right, this is pretty predictable, but I don't care because I know Butch already knows what I'm going to pick, but um, I couldn't have my favorite instrumentals without having Mr. Scary on there. Um, that's just, <laughs> that's just a no brainer for me. Um, I, you know, George Lynch is in my top three favorite guitar players of all time and um, rightfully so he's just incredible and yep. he absolutely rips on that track. It's just, it's phenomenal. Um, and it's really funny because they, he was actually trying to do an instrumental on Under Lock and Key, which is the album before. And the instrumental is actually my favorite Dawkins song of all time, The Hunter. And they added lyrics to that last minute. So I think I just really love <laughs> Lynch instrumentals, um, although I really would love to know what that would have sounded like. Um, mm. But yeah, Mr. Scary uh, had to be on there for me. There was, there was no uh, going without having that in the top five. So 
Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a great song. And, you know, I will say not to deviate the conversation, but yeah. uh, I listened to George's new instrumental album a couple times. It's not great. Really? I love it. Really? Yeah, I, I don't find it very catchy. I don't know. It's wow. missing something for me. It's He's different. playing is great. I don't know. I just don't find the compositions memorable. I don't know. I wanted to love it because I'm like, man, this is the album we've been waiting for forever. I don't huh. know. Maybe I need to really go like I've listened to it a couple times but I haven't I really need to kind of sit there and like not do anything else like just really focus on it to form you know a, a direct opinion but I mean I I enjoyed it the, the first you know one or two times that I listened to it but you know yeah, I didn't dislike it I just I was expecting yeah. to be blown away by it and I really was also we're going you know as always kind of going off of you know things that are kind of set the bar like you know, Mr. Scary and stuff like that like his previous work so yeah, who knows? It's very different for him, but I, I totally love it. I, I totally dig it, and I get where he's going with it. But, yeah, he's not trying to do the shred thing that you're expecting him to do, which is kind of why I like it. He went in a little bit. He shifted gears down a little bit and didn't go full on, okay, I'm going to go shredderific. And I, and I kind of appreciate that. I, I really I like it a lot, honestly. Well, yeah, I mean, he really hasn't been that guy anyway for a while. I yeah. mean, he's, I, I don't think that's where his head's at anymore to do that whole shreddy thing. So, you know, um, I can appreciate him wanting to do what he wants to do. And that's, you know, yeah. it's the player he is now, right? So, yeah. So yep. All right, Nick, what do you got? Hi. So I'm going, this is probably a very basic uh, pick, I guess, for whatever, when I'm usually coming out with crazy shit, but, uh, I'm going with one of my favorite, favorite, absolute favorite novels of all time. I have to give some love to Orion by Metallica. Um, Cliff Burton was uh, a god. And, uh, and it's funny because I was listening, I was, you know, reacquainting myself with it. I actually haven't listened to it in a while yet. And I was listening to it and I was like, man, it's amazing that Metallica dedicated themselves to um, tepid, bland, mundane, ordinary, like, garbageness so soon after they achieved such heights and you know i know cliff burton probably made the song so great because of the way he played the bass solos and um using a wah wah pedal and doing all the crazy things that he that he did to make it such a compositional masterpiece but you know it makes me just mad because of like how can you go from that to sad but true i mean they didn't go directly to sad but true but that's well, just know, well, wait a minute now I, I just, I'll never understand it. I'll, I'll never understand how you can make something as beautifully, because it's not just like they played a shitload of notes and it was super complicated. It, it's a beautiful, seamless masterpiece that goes from crescendo to little parts and up and down. And it's so beautiful and so amazing. And I, I mean, since I was 12 years old, like I think what, what, Christmas uh, 19, I, mean, I was a couple of years late, but Christmas like 1988, I remember sitting there playing Dragon Warrior on Nintendo with my brother and just like listening to fucking Master of Puppets. I had the white cassette that I played it till it broke. Um, and I just I just can't believe that they, uh, you know, got so just bland. You know, I mean, I love I love, I, I love Injustice for All and, you know, To Live is to Die is one paragraph spoken word away from being one of my favorite instrumentals, too. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm not mad at that record, but like, I just feel like, I don't know, man, it never, how can you go from that to that? But that's not what this is about. Well, that's for something for something else. But to just talk about Orion, I mean, there's so much emotion and uh, feeling packed into that song that uh, I don't know how everybody just, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just amazing. So definitely Orion. Great song. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. All right, Ryan. All right, so I'm gonna well, I'm gonna pick a thrash band too, but a little from bit of Canada. A <laughs> no, not from Canada, from Switzerland. Uh, going to Switzerland here. Uh, still so cold. This, uh, still cold. Yep. Still, uh, <laughs> still mountainous in areas. Uh, now, this were one of the first bands that really started playing like metal with like an overly, overly like intentionally like technical edge to it. So the band is Coroner. Uh, the guitarist was uh, Tommy Barron, who's, I don't know, one of my top five thrash guitarists ever. This guy could shred up and down mountains, you know, it was insane. And this is their first album, R.I.P., and it had a song on it called Nosferatu. And uh, it's not like Orion, which is like Nick said, a very like, it builds up and has a lot of, movement. this is just a straight up high speed thrash attack. Guy is just shredding nonstop, 
it's the shred guitar on this is over the fucking top. Uh, the rest of the band, the other two guys backed them up. They were just a power trio. And uh, yeah, Coroner was that band. They could play very technical thrash, tons of guitar solos, very, you know, very compositionally, like, robust. And it was catchy, too. They could write catchy songs. It wasn't just all, like, notes flying everywhere. And uh, they got, you know, as they went on, they got, you know, I'm going to say they didn't smooth down the edges, but they got better at being songwriters. But early on, it was like more just balls out. You know, they were a young, hungry band. And uh, so I love this first album. But the song Nosferatu, ah, it's just insane. It's just a couple minutes of just like nonstop shred thrash intensity. Doesn't let up. It's just a great shot of adrenaline and then it's over. So, and they had a couple other good instrumentals too. But this one, I think is kind of like the most uh, over the top because they were just so young and hungry at this point. So going with our, our sorry, Nosferatu by Coroner. Middletown twice. Very cool. Excellent. Foreign. Foreigner played in Middletown twice. That's kind of an interesting yeah, way back. fact. <clears throat> way back. Yeah. Punishment for decades. All right, Steve, back, back to you. All right. Let's see, I knocked off a couple off my list here. Uh, boy, we really knocked off quite a few, actually. <laughs> but I'm going to go with Adam Hart Mother, Pink Floyd, for number three. Mm. 23 minutes of relaxation i would say i've had problems with it over the years sometimes with insomnia and that album will just put me in a zone and relax me enough to get some rest i guess at times it's just a relaxing 23 minutes that whole album is you know you got to be in the mood for it but great album it's one of those albums that people never talk about that's a good one it's a really good one actually because it's, really cool. it's got a cow on the cover it's got a cow on the cover it's trippy <laughs> and yeah <laughs> It's good. Very trippy yeah. and very spacey. Of right. course, it's Pink Floyd, right? Yeah, good choice. And that's, yeah. you know, pretty much what I got to say. I don't have too much to say about it. But. Okay, well, that's a good one. Chris Allen, are you wearing an Emperor's Return shirt? I am. Wow. Is, I have never seen one of those. Awesome. I love I it. Saw, I've had those for years in a shop. You can get anything Ooh. off the internet. Yeah, that is true. That is true. I'm to look for one. Very cool. sell that one. Well, Steve, if you got one, put one aside for me. I'll have to get that. I don't think any more, but for years. <laughs> Nick, you're wearing the shirt for the band Emperor. Well, I think they copped their name from that Celtic Frost EP. If I'm not mistaken. Look at that circle. Yeah, of, like, right. Of course they did. <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, Spaghetti, I'm all the way back to you. All right. Uh, well, since a young Steve Vai was mentioned and there were some su suggestions of classical music, I cannot leave out a Zappa composition. And a very young Steve Vai plays on this Zappa tune called What's New in Baltimore. It's on a, an album called Frank Zappa Meets the Mothers of Prevention. It was one of his later records, but it still had a very young Steve Vai on it. The uh, it is absolutely beautiful. It's bombastic. It's it's Zappa. So you know Zappa being the composer that he was, he clearly had uh, like you know a classical composition in mind. So it has this beautiful bombastic, uh, roaring, soaring grand pianos, and then it, it just goes into this just gorgeous gu guitar solos between Steve and Frank. And I mean, I could talk for hours about Frank. Zappa alone and his guitar solos, but uh, this is like just the top of the top, beautiful. And him and Steve I are both changing, exchanging solos on it. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's called What's New in Baltimore by Frank Zappa. Now, there's a lot of versions of it, as, as there is a lot of versions of uh, many Zappa songs. But uh, this one on this album called Frank Zappa Meets the Mothers of Prevention, absolutely gorgeous, absolutely beautiful, and a very young Steve Vai. So check that one out. How young was he? Early 20s. I mean, uh, he started touring with Frank when he was 18 on the 75 tour. So Frank grabbed him up as a teenager. So yes, he, he was very young. Steve, I went to Zappa school. Big <laughs> yes, time. He did before he even got to Zappa. <laughs> yeah. He was in Zappa school. Yeah. Is that Frank over your left shoulder, Spaghetti, I see in the back? That is a painting that a friend of mine did. It's the greatest gift I ever had. I never asked for it. Somebody just showed up one day at my house with a with a painting of Frank Zappa for me, and I, I'm forever grateful. It's awesome. That's yeah, a good it's a friend painting. right there. Nice. Yeah, really cool. Really, really cool. Nice. Thanks. All right, Bryce, back to you. <laughs> All right, so my number two, and this is really tough for me because I love each of these top two, but I'm going to go with Inferno 
by Marty Friedman from 2014. Th this is one of the few times I can remember in my life that I was anticipating an album because, you know, this whole era and I'm only 25. So I was 17 when this came out. And I specifically remember going to Best Buy, getting it, putting it on, just being blown away by this. Um, and if people, I think people kind of have a misconception about Marty since he left Megadeth that he just plays some like Japanese pop crap. But a lot of his stuff is super fast and heavy. He's got a ton of solo albums. And this one I'd say is maybe his best song of all time. Flows perfectly, amazing riffs. He, I know he doesn't like the word shred, but he's shredding all over. It's not a derogatory term for me. And just, it's amazing. So anybody that hasn't heard this, there's a really cool music video for it. Go check it out. Inferno, number two. Nice. Best guitar player Megadeth ever had. He's my favorite metal guitar player ever. So, yeah, I agree. Very cool. All right, Chris, what do you got? All right. Um, this guy got really weird in later years, but um, I liked his uh, previous band. And um, he started out doing this first record is almost all instrumentals. Um, and I was never a guitar player and I was never a guitar nerd. Um, but I really like this first Ingve record, and uh, my favorite song would probably be the the open. There's just some great stuff on here, but uh, probably Black Star is my uh, my favorite oh. song. Um, it's heavy, it's melodic. Um, I don't know how you describe it because I'm not a guitar nerd, but I really like it. You're, you're doing a great it. job, man. I, I can tell you flat out. I can remember being an Alcatraz fan, and then stepping back and hearing Steeler after Alcatraz, and then waiting for him, you know, that record to come out after he left Alcatraz, it was, it, it was one of those, like, what the fuck is that? Is this? Yeah. <laughs> for sure. so it was a, it was a huge game changer in the guitar world, man. That was like, no one had heard stuff like that yeah. before, even with the Alcatraz stuff, which is phenomenal, but that. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I love the Alcatraz like, stuff. Oof. Great I asked him, I asked him numerous times in interviews if he'd ever go back and he was always like, yeah, maybe I'll do something with them. And then, of course, it's never happened, and they're suing each other and hating each other. And yeah, it's a whole lot, whole mess now. But like every other happened. fucking band. Exactly. Yeah. Great pick, though. Yeah, that was, that was a monumental record, man, yeah. for guitar for sure. Yeah, that's on my honorable mentions list, so I'm glad it got mentioned. <laughs> More about that later. Back to book. <laughs> <laughs> on to me. Uh, well, a guitar player that is one of my three pillars of guitar that I the way that I look at it, um, and it's Gary Moore. Uh, his last, as far as I'm concerned, the last great rock, hard rock, metal-ish record that he made from 89 uh, after the war. That's not 89. Where year is that? 88, maybe? 88, 88, yeah, it was 88. Yeah, 88. Um, after the war, the Messiah will come again. Oh, great song. It's, uh, it, yeah. I mean, that song encapsulates everything that Gary Moore is about from the hard rock days and before he got to the blues days but with that song you can see and hear where he's going to with the blues stuff hey ryan's dog's here yeah she was crying at the door. She was with a sweater <laughs> oh yeah he gets cold in the winter time she gets a little sweater on. <laughs> um but yeah the messiah would come again is just a tremendous if, if you guys haven't heard that song before from after the war with cozy fucking Powell playing drums on that record too. That's Not the whole cool. record. He doesn't play on the whole record. He plays on most of it though, but he does play on that song. Um, it's just a, it's a great song. And, and Gary Moore just again, shows why he's one of the greatest guitar players that ever walked the face of this earth. Um, just stellar. Everything. Like I said, everything that made Gary Gary is in that song, the fire, the blues, he rips the tone, everything. It's just, it's a beauty. Some of the most emotional guitar playing you'll ever hear, ever. Yep. And, 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 honestly, and I'm going to say it right now, it's better than the original. I was just going to say, and it's a cover that most people don't realize from Roy Buchanan. And uh, yeah. And the original's great too, but. Yep. Gary's Gary. <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right, Sydney, back to you. All right, um, so for this one, I had to go with a pick from my favorite guitar player of all time, and it's actually his birthday today, which is why I'm wearing the shirt, Long Live Randy. It's my favorite. Right. This will forever be my favorite guitar player. Um, and I'm kind of cheating with this one because 
there's a couple, but you know, he only did so, so few of them. So I'm just going to go for it. Um, the one that I was thinking of specifically first was on one of the more recent versions of Blizzard of Oz. There are a bunch of outtakes um, that they had ended up taking from the sessions and everything. Um, and one is titled RR, obviously for Randy Rhodes. And um, it's a really awesome instrumental. It's not that long um, from Randy, but it really kind of showcases so much of his talent. And uh, I just, I had to include that. He didn't, he didn't have that many, um, he didn't really have that many instrumentals, but another one was had one. <laughs> yeah, but he also had, he had D, which is one I want to mention as well, which was short. That was on the actual record um, that he wrote for his mom. And then another one that he performed uh, actually when he was in Quiet Riot called Laughing Gas. Right. That wasn't actually ever recorded as a studio version, but they ended up taking a live um, recording of it enhancing it with um i think they think they might have re-recorded the vocals um what's really cool about that one specifically is that a lot of you can hear a couple bits and pieces of what would eventually go on to be in some of the later ozzy stuff that he used in that instrumental um and it's so cool just to hear the the kind of parallels between that and and what eventually went to ozzy but um i had to include him somehow you know his playing is just my favorite of all time. And um, I had to, you know, perfect timing with it being his birthday and everything. So yeah, happy 65th, Randy. Yep, 65. Damn. What we what we could have heard from him, right? Had, had it not been for that fateful day. Yeah. I was gonna say, so what we would have got like 43 years of solo stuff, because you know he was right, he was leaving Ozzy yeah, like everybody. Yeah. He was the first one well, off that ship. He he actually <laughs> um, had talked to his brother and sister, and his brother and sister said that he had he actually had plans to continue with Ozzy. He wanted to take a break from touring and go and do the classical stuff um, at UCLA where his mom went, but he had he had plans to come back for another album or two. But he did want to do solo stuff though, right? Yeah. That's... He, he, he didn't, I don't know if he wanted to 100% do like classical solo stuff, but I think he wanted to go and study. And yeah, I think- he wanted, he wanted to study. Thing. Yeah, he said he, he wanted to study everything I've ever read is that he wanted to study he wanted to get the degree and he wanted to teach. Yep, because he loved well, teaching. I'm, I'm sure Sharon wasn't going to be waiting as great as Randy was. Don't get me wrong. Sharon wasn't pulling that tour right. bus off for Randy. Right. No, no doubt about it. I mean, right. Christ, he died and what? They missed like how long, how long were they off the road? A month. Hardly any time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he definitely, like I said, he just definitely had plans to. But I mean, at this point, you know, who knows yeah. what would have happened, yeah. um, unfortunately. Yep. And he was only 25, so that's the big thing. It's like, you know, wow, he was still young. horrible. That's right. Horrible. Terrible. So that's young. Terrible. They used to do those Randy Rhodes Remember. remembrance shows. I, I yeah. went to one of them. It was awesome in was Jersey great. somewhere. I went yeah. to one out in LA in, in 2018. That was cool. Yeah, they were a lot of fun. All right, Nick, we're back to you. You know, these scientists are, are trying to bring back like extinct mastodons and mammoths. Why don't they bring back Randy Rhodes and Cliff Burke? <laughs> Like, put your brain to use and bring us back, you know, instead of giant elephants. We're cool just... zombies, Nick. Have you see how that works out? They're going to bring back elephants that are just going to shit everywhere. Um, bring back elephants if you're going to bring somebody back, man. Yeah. You're going to bring back zombies, man. Yeah. Zombie elephants. Um, zombie elephants. That doesn't sound too good. I would, I would, I would pick Cliff Burke. He eats more than peanut that, butter and that banana banana sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pick Cliff and Randy over Elvis. Every day and twice on Sunday. Sorry, but anyway. <laughs> so um, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. Right. I'm going uh, now a couple of months down the popularity ladder into my realm of uh, more underground metal. It's and, a funny way to say it. Yeah, a couple of rungs down. But uh, I'm going to do a, a little bit of a twofer here, just because nobody's. A few of you know this band, but the band is Sentenced. Um, oh, from yeah, from Finland. Um, two of their finer albums here amok from 95 and frozen from uh 98 97 98 i love frozen yeah me too and um so they, these guys are from a little town called olu in finland which is like above the arctic circle so they pretty much drink vodka with santa claus up there and um you know it's very dark and long winters and a lot of depression and uh their guitar player mika tenkula who uh he did die 2009 from complications i think due to diabetes or something something going on with 
about him. But he was such a talented young man. And um, they made two instrumentals, uh, The Golden Stream of Lapland and uh, a song called Mourn, M-O-U-R-N. And they are two of the most emotionally charged, uh, uh, what do you call it, instrumentals that I've ever heard. And uh, I highly recommend this band to anyone. They're, 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 you know, pretty much traditional heavy metal, hard rock kind of structures. Uh, and the guitar playing on those songs just reaches a level of just, uh, you know, heartbreaking sadness and longing. Uh, you know, they still rock pretty good, but like, man, they just, they just, churn such emotion out of those notes um and and these are guys that you know they're known in the underground but they're really not known like internationally by by tons and tons of people and it's a shame because i think you'll find you 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 dive into those things put them on your headsets and you will be transported just like these other major artists we're talking about so i definitely got to give the nod to sentence uh with golden stream of lapland and more Incredible. Great, great pick, man. I, I, but you know what? Sentence is the one of those bands that there's there's two two different versions, really. Yeah. You know, there's the Just early stuff, that, which is you know way different than from mm -hmm. Frozen on. You know. Certainly, certainly, yeah. And the Muck was their transition album. Where they still had yeah. the old singer, but got away from the death metal and some more of like the traditional metal structure. I this is my favorite Sentence album by Miles. Oh, is it really? Yeah, I, I, it's also the first like European metal band that I really really heard like uh, of this type of nature like i didn't know this stuff existed and somebody just gave it to me when i was 18 at the alternative in Ossing, the uh, a store called the alternative yeah. and uh the guy there was just he'd walk in he'd size you up and be like here through like <laughs> everything i listened to today at me you know <laughs> it was amazing so yeah highly recommended but don't don't forget the album crimson oh yeah yeah no, i have them all i have them all that's 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 probably my favorite i love that record yeah. fragile Oof. cool all right, Ryan and Muggsy, what's up? Uh, Ryan, this is Muggsy's pick. Now. Hey, your dog got bigger. Yeah, and changed color too, and uh, changed his little Big outfit. sweater. <laughs> sweater. <laughs> How'd you do that? Uh, well, the other one walked out now, so uh, he's like, I don't like that pink stuff. Give me, give me the uh, yeah. poof. You yeah. want the manly one? We, you got the camo sweater here. Muggsy's uh, like, let's talk about doom metal. Yeah, so you want to talk about doom metal? So. Uh, so uh, this band's been in my mind a lot because I always love listening to them when the weather changes, starts snowing, gets cold out. Oh, he just broke. Bless you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. I apologize to everybody there. Dog's oh, very rude. Uh, this, this is one of my favorite bands to listen to once it starts getting cold and wintry. Uh, and that band is from the Pacific Northwest, so it's kind of appropriate for this. And the band's called Agalock. And uh, this is their 2002 album, The Mantle. And... Uh, so we talk about a lot of guitar-centric stuff here, which is great. I love that stuff. I love shreddy stuff. Obviously, some of my own picks were very shreddy. But uh, this band's it's they're slow. They're not really doom metal. But it's very melancholic and slow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's good headphones music. It's good for walking through the woods uh, on a snowy day. Uh, it's just that kind of band, you know. Uh, the vocals are a little harsh, but it's not heavy at all. But it's just very somber. And to me, it's like the perfect band for that. Uh, I don't know if I'd say this is their best album, but it is the first one I heard. Uh, and I've always stuck with me. And the third track is called Odal, O-D-A-L. And it's just a very slow, again, it just, it fits in with the you know first song. The first proper song is like 14 minutes long. goes through a lot of changes, like builds up, it comes back down. And then they have this instrumental, which is like, I think seven or eight minutes long. And it really just kind of leads you on this path too. And they were so good at that. Uh, they broke up a couple of years ago. I know Nick and myself saw them a couple of times and they were just, fucking phenomenal lot like they pulled yeah, this too they pulled the sound off perfectly which is not easy to do because it's very spacious and kind of like reflective music and that's hard to pull out when you're packed into a room with like a thousand drunk people you know in new york city but uh, they did it they, they really and nick. and nick yeah and he well i don't think he was drunk at that show because we saw I count him, as five uh, people uh, yeah williamsburg music hall and i don't remember what year it was but yeah, that place yeah. was fucking packed. And man, they just absolutely killed. Like it was like one of the probably one of the best shows I've ever seen in my life. It was it was that good. And uh yeah, so I'm going with Odell from Mantle. This is one of my favorite bands. They don't get talked a lot about on here because I know it's just hard to find like context to bring them up a lot. But I mean, I, I really love these guys. And uh yeah, well, we had a some snow, it was just it, it melted by the afternoon, but we had our first snowfall here, I don't know, like a week or two ago. So when I woke up, looked outside, so it's like, man, you know what? It's Agalock time. I got to dig those albums out, throw them on, you know, driving around, with snow on the trees. It's just perfect for that. So, yeah, fucking Agalock. Love Agalock you guys. Agalock time. Friend, the dog, the dog looks a little bit like the seal from uh, uh, Riot. 
if you look directly at it. <laughs> Ryan, you ready for this? Uh, I, I actually have, have, have I, you know, what's up? I was going to say, Ryan, just to surprise you, I actually have one of the records. What, uh, is, it, is it this one? Which one is it? I have Marrow of the Spirit. Oh, Oof. hold that Oof. out. Get the fourth one? Do you, do you like it? Yeah. It's, uh, it wouldn't you know make what? it to my iTunes if I didn't. All right. That's, you know what? That, so that's the, the, the album after that is good, but this is the second. So the first three before that. And I'll say that album, by the time they got to that point, they kind of laid off the, uh, the guitars a little bit. But the first album, Pale Folklore, tons and tons of absolutely amazing lead guitar. Like really, okay. really good. Not, not shreddy, but just like right. really soulful, powerful. This album's got some of it, but the first album is just like chock full of it. So I would say yeah, Pale Folklore worked your time. Really, okay. really good. Ashes, Ashes against the Grain as well. Ashes Against the Grain, Butch. Okay. Check that one out too. Yeah, yeah. third one. Yeah. Every, you know, everything they did is, is phenomenal. They're, they're a really good band. But uh, yep. Yeah, they are. <laughs> but they are. Ooh. I Steve, remember when I, down, I, I remember them playing at Irving Plaza. I yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that was that was the last time I saw them was at Irving Plaza. Didn't, didn't, I didn't, uh, didn't uh, Jax Toth open up? It, I think so. Maybe. Yeah. Nick, yeah. you remember yeah. that lady came walking out and uh, came. Was and that show though? Something. Was that the show? They definitely yeah. played together. They definitely played together. Yeah, that was there. Yeah. yeah. Anyhow, and it's amazing that Nick. And Ryan picked out two kind of obscure things, and Butch actually knew. This is a new record. It's well, I could I could read that one though. It's, that doesn't count. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna read is, that if, one. Is if they if they say read, something, it's, a, it's just a deer. But yeah, it's right. <laughs> but it's see, nice look, Nick. Deer. I can almost see the look. No, bring it up, Ryan. Bring it back, Ryan. Bring it back. So looking through the deer antlers and everything, I can almost see the logo with the trees coming through. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. There we <laughs> go. Actually, the logo's right there, and like. Size font. Yeah, there it is. I can laugh. That's just like I'm, 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 jo I'm just branches. joking with yeah. the with the antlers, it. with the tree branches and everything. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. they do have a metal logo, but it wasn't on that album. Yeah, that's oh, a good oh, oh, <laughs> all righty, it's my number. I'm at number two, right? We're all at number two now. Yep. Number two, I'm going with Jethro Tull, Blu-ray. Off of 1969's Stand Up, and uh, just watched the video just a little while ago from they did an, uh, some some French television channel, and it's just I would have loved to got to see Jethro Tell back in those days. They were just so abstract on stage, and then and, and I and my my wife is watching it with me, and she's like, you know, he's insane. I'm like, yeah, he looks insane the way he's playing a flute. He's like, totally. He was such, he's such a showman, you know. I yeah. never got to see Jethro Tull. We went over that last week, though. That was one of the bands I never got to see. Yeah, and, and, a lot of chances, too. Jesus. Yeah. But I really wanted to see him before I was going to shows back in those days, really, in the early, early late 60s, early 70s. But, uh, hmm. yeah, I had a lot of chances to see him for sure. But, and that's one I did not see. So, Beret, and uh, such a great song. Get the toe. It is. That's very short cool. and sweet. Beret, Beret is beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So, are we on number two? Two. Yeah. yeah. yeah we're on two. I must have, like, skipped myself because yeah, I'm sick. Like, last time you didn't go. I did. I okay. Back, back. All right. So, all right. So, I'm going to give you two right now. So, I good. Double now. Yeah. Double so, uh, all right. So, my number three was uh, Far Beyond the Sun from Ingve off of the Rising Force album. <clears throat> and Chris is absolutely right. You could pick almost any track from here, right? Yeah, true. But that, I think, is my favorite. You know, that's my number three. Uh, my number two, I'm going to go with um, King Crimson, Lark's Tongues and Aspic Part 2, <laughs> the one that finished. I knew you'd get King Crimson in there somewhere. Yeah, I've been on a King Crimson kick for a few months now. Um, I almost went with Red, but I think I like Lark's part two better. It's heavy and it's just like loud and raucous and just crazy. And uh, Robert Fripp is just absolutely amazing. And you got Bill Bruford and John Wetton. I mean, so that's my number two. Got to throw some Crimson in there. All right, now we're, we're all caught up. Back to number one. Spaghetti, what do you got? 
All right, number one. And first of all, a bunch that were mentioned tonight were on my list too. I had Ho Down by Emerson Lake and Palmer. I had Frankenstein on there. I had Villa Strangiata, of course. But luckily, I did my homework and wrote more than my top five. So <laughs> we started earlier with, uh, we were in Texas with Steve Ray Vaughn. And let's button it up uh, in Texas with ZZ Top. Uh, the last track on the Tejas record is a track called Asleep in the Desert, and it's awesome. I mean, it's so unlike the rest of ZZ Top's catalog. It's got Billy Gibbons playing you know, this gorgeous flamenco acoustic guitar over this really heavy, sleepy bottom. It's just really, really cool. Um, and it really buttons up that record. Like it, that's one of my favorite ZZ Top records. I think when we talk about ZZ Top, uh, Tejas is usually not at the very tip yeah. top of people's list. My but favorite I, too, man. I love definitely that one of my yeah. favorites. I love um, that. So uh, ZZ Top, Asleep in the Desert. It's it's completely instrumental, of course, but and it's nothing like the rest of their catalog. I wish they had done more like this, more tracks like this, because. It really shines through. I mean, they're really, really awesome. So, and, and it just the flamenco guitar, Billy Gibbons is a great guitar player. And, and I, there's very little, if any, acoustic Billy Gibbons. I I don't know of any other than on that track. Um, it's really awesome. So, Sleep in the Desert by ZZ Top on Tejas. Killer, killer song. God knows I love Billy Gibbons. Yeah. I would have liked to have heard him do more instrumental stuff, period, whether it be acoustic or electric. I, yeah. I thought that he, his style would have been really good for that, but maybe he's still cranking stuff out. You never know. You know yeah. Was, um, last yeah. record was great. I What's up, Steve? Last record. Are we going on this last round here? Or are you going to mention if you have a couple of honorable mentions, we'll just do it with number one. Or do you want to go all the way, loop around all the way? Around? Yeah, we'll loop around again and then we'll just run through. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, Bryce, what's your number one? All right, so my number one is Concerto from the Speed Metal Symphony album, Cacophony. Again, <laughs> I, 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 I love the shreddy stuff, and that is just a majestic, amazing song. Uh, you got Marty and Jason, one of the best duos ever, even though, I mean, they played on each other's solo stuff, too, in the two Cacophony albums. The song is just mind-blowing, like maestro type of stuff. Such a, an amazing, memorable, like main riff melody thing there. And just the shred all between. It's it's so good. And it almost brings a tear to my eye how good it is. So that's my number one, Concerto. Look, you know what, Bryce? I, I just got to tell Bryce this. Then. In like 89, I think I went to L.A. And there was something that they called the L.A. Guitar Show. And I don't remember exactly where it was, but I remember walking in and, you know, all the different booths, you know, Mesa Boogie, Marshall, whatever, they, they had their booths. And I walked up and there was a Carvin booth. And as I walked up, there's Jason Becker and Marty Friedman playing in the Carvin booth. Very quiet. It wasn't, you know, wasn't stacks or anything, just really quiet. And the both of them, I just remember stopping and watching them and just watching them just completely shredding away between the two of them and they were smiling at each other they were having it was like there was nobody else around them they were just playing to each other and having the best time ever but i remember stopping and being like holy shit that's fucking jason becker and marty freeman just going awesome. insane yeah. so yeah just knowing that how much you love marty man yeah you would you would you would have died <laughs> yeah that's i'm jealous for sure yeah, I'm finally not the only one who gets shit rubbed in their face now. So that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm coming back to you. Don't worry. <laughs> At least it's not just me anymore. So I'll take that. I'll take I'll take that. Well, listen, the two of you can take being young. I can I can rub something in your face because I'm old. I don't want to be old. I'd rather be young and have someone rubbing shit in my face. Say that. Say that. I thought I thought Butch said it was a carving booth, like roast beef and <laughs> oh, ham. And I was like, that's that sounds like a fucking great show to me. Chris, I heard I'm thing. starving, man. Mind, that's I what, shit off. That's what I thought. Like, yeah, I'll, take, I'll take a couple of slices, please. Always right. think about food. Just just a little horse. horseradish on that or on that roast beef <laughs> still thinking about lamb chops dude, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. dude i'm starving let's go oh, i gotta eat something it's feeding oh, time at the zoo god damn <laughs> i swear that's what i thought butch said carbon carbon and guitars ah all right carbon <laughs> all right so it's close it's close uh, you're close you're you're out in LA, LA, man <laughs> I gotta say real quick before uh, we were at the Accept show the other day, right before Accept went on, 
I was asking my friend because COVID fucked up all the all the schedules in the diners. Oh sure. That's my friend. I'm like, is it oh, like the usual diners are all closed by like eleven? I'm like, this fucking sucks. So I asked my friend, like, is this diner any good on my phone? And Pete's like, the headliner's not even on. And you're already thinking about going to the fucking diner. I'm like, you got to. That's play awesome. Headliner. You got to. Right. You have this shit fucking scheduled out. He's, he's like on his phone. He's like, oh, but how about this one? How about this one? I'm like, the band hasn't even come on. Yet. You guys are already <laughs> worrying about the damn That's food. funny. Five steps ahead. Thinking five steps ahead. Hey, man. Priorities. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Those pancakes saved my life. Thank goodness. <laughs> nice. I brought you back to life too, because you were you were uh, you were fading there. He was fading. Oh, he was. Uh, Butch, I love you, man. I love you, man. Butch, <laughs> true. Butch, Don't I love you. Pancakes and like a little a little flip switch. He's like, oh, whoa. All right, let's talk about the show. Yeah. You know, blah, blah. It sounds like Nick had a stellar night, but did he dive into any like rubbish containers or garbage? Bags like oh, we were almost easy. there. We were close. It was ah, okay. He did close. That. He was uh, hanging out with me and like two of my employees that never went to a show with us one night. We're just walking to get like pizza after the show in the city, and all of a sudden he just runs and dives up into the air and lands on top of like a whole pile of garbage. That could be risky in the city. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I don't remember that either. Look at it. I, I, I would recommend that. I remember. <laughs> Like I never, anyway, so sorry to derail. That's uh, right. Yeah, it was a good like start. Off. Where do we leave off, Chris? I think it's you, right? Oh, yeah, it's me. Chris. Okay, all right. Uh, Spaghetti mentioned Number the one. cover version, uh, but I'm going with the original. My all-time favorite rock instrumental. Uh, this is, I think, the last time I bought this. Um, <laughs> rat salad, not <laughs> bat salad. Rat salad <laughs> off of uh, Paranoid. It's. Uh, you know, my my favorite, I think, of the the Aussie records. It's it's got the right level of distortion. There's a great Bill Ward drum solo right in the middle, um, and it's it's a killer song, and uh, and I love it. And um, I was really bummed that by the time they actually by Sab by the time Sabbath actually played it live again in modern times, a Bill Ward wasn't there. So that kind of was really odd. And then they played a video with Bill Ward on the screen the whole thing i'm like this is just weird but um it was still cool so yeah it is rat salad not bat salad by, <laughs> by black sabbath <laughs> all right great song absolutely i still do want to hear bat salad though but yeah, yeah oh yeah no, no no i want to check it out too i'm fucking intrigued i i want to hear that yeah all right butch final thing so my number one, even though I, I didn't plan it out to be numbered like that, um, two guys do a great cover of this song. It took two of them to try to do the original. Uh, Richie Kotzen and Greg Howe do a phenomenal cover of this song. And when you actually listen to it, it's like Kotzen's in one side and, and Howe's in the other side. So they're completely separate. So you can hear them doing the stuff going back and forth out of the speakers, which is really, really cool. Um, but it is a great song by one of the original guys that started the whole guitar instrumental thing. Mr. Jeff Beck is a song called Lead Boots. Uh, yeah. It's heavy. Beck is Beck. You see why he's still regarded as one of the guitar gods. Like I said, he's one of the guys that uh, I don't know if he's. No, nah, I guess I guess there were guys ahead of him. McLaughlin was ahead of him a little bit, but um, but Lead Boots from Wired is just goddamn. It's just a really fucking cool song. Just the way it starts with the drum pattern that starts it, and God, and just and Beck just comes in and just owns the fucking song. God damn. And then he's track. <laughs> exactly. It's uh. <laughs> It's just a badass song. And like I said, if you want to hear a cool modern version of that tremendous song, check out uh, Richie Kotzen and Greg Howe together doing that. Uh, I think it's on uh, Kotzen Howe 2. I think it's on a second record. Um, but yeah, forget that. That's great to listen to, but it's about the original. It's about the Jeff Beck version. It's just, man, I, I stole that from my cousin <laughs> when I was, I think, 11 years old. I, like I borrowed it and never gave it back. That and, Je and that and Blow by Blow. So I got the two classic solo albums from Jeff Beck from my cousin. And yeah, Lead Boots has always always stood up for me. It's just a, a great, great 
instrumental and it really was one of the one of the the cornerstones and pioneering things of, of where <laughs> we've gone to in instrumental rock guitar for sure and now that you said that your phone will be ringing tomorrow from your cousin be like yo man <laughs> looking for that album for 40 years i haven't seen him since so that's, that's why <laughs> okay well, there you have it. <laughs> You don't took have to worry about in. that phone call then. All nope, right. sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sydney, your final pick of the day. All right, this one was already said a long time ago, but I'm going to keep it on my list anyway because it was the whole, it was a song that I was listening to and I, that's why I brought up this topic because I was like, man, this is a great song. And Avila uh, Strangiato, everyone, she did pick Rush. I wow. do. Oh, no like, one was expecting that. Lavilla Strangiato? <laughs> oh my God. That's out of left field, I gotta tell you. I'm wow. Sorry. Oh man. She came around. Oh, oh shit. Unexpected. I did not see that coming. <laughs> oh my God. Meanwhile, Bryce isn't no. laughing because he hates Rush too. So not, there you go. No, oh. I, I don't hate him. I don't like really no, everybody I don't hate. Hey, it's a strong <laughs> word, man. I'm hey. finally not the only person getting picked on and not the only hey. person getting picked on for this. So thank you, Bryce, for coming tonight. Hey, I like Fly By Night. I like the first two albums the best. Don't try yeah. to save yourself That's... now. You've already hey, 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 like some. Yeah, I like some stuff. They're not there. The oh, you're, you're thrown to the side. Just Bryce like is like, don't pull me down with you, lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm trying God. to get in good with these old guys. Don't <laughs> fuck it up for me. He's working with me. He's got Life in Dangers and Van Halen too right there. Yeah. I already, I already love nice. Bryce. He knows. <laughs> we just got warriors up what? there too. Got some Anyway, my actual pick is Coast to Coast by the Scorpions. And hands down one of my what? well obviously it's number one i mean it was hard for me to order but i guess i would say it's right up there with being just one of my favorite instrumentals of all time and um i can definitely uh chris what you were talking about earlier is i definitely feel like there's probably a bit of, of michael Schenker in there um no matter oh, what yeah. anybody anybody oh. decides to stay um you can really kind of hear that in there and um yeah i was listening to it and it's one of those songs too that if i feel like if you put lyrics on that song and it came out it would have been a huge scorpions hit i feel like if you you know what i mean and it's it's one of those songs that i think is overlooked by um just the average you know rock fan or anything who's not too deep into that into the band um just because it is an instrumental but if you if you had put lyrics on that it would have been massive so um i i love that instrumental i love the scorpions or they've always been one of my favorite bands um so yeah that's my number one it was one of the highlights of their setback in the day. I mean, you know, Klaus yeah. would strap a guitar yeah, on the yeah. yeah. out there in front. And, yeah, oh, yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the last time I saw them, I think, was 2017, and they were still doing it. And still playing it, yeah. Still with Klaus on guitar, yeah. Yeah. And like Butch garden, said, yeah. you know, um, Michael shanker has been doing it now for years. Yep. That was the garden with Megan, right? Yes. With uh, opening up, yeah. Yes, yep. and Chris, I, I do have to also mention, I think we've talked about this before, but when I also interviewed Michael, it was the same thing. Um, I asked, well, I asked one question and it went um, for a very long time, but- yeah, he, he interviews himself. He did bring up, totally unprovoked by me, um, yeah, his hatred of his brother. Um, so brother, <laughs> it's, right. it's, a, it's a topic wow. that he loves to talk about. Yeah, yeah, no wow. reunions there anytime soon. No, no, no not at all. His, his whole tirade against Rudolph is now the second track of every live show he plays now. It's like he plays <laughs> yes. that song, and then he goes into this whole time like Jesus, Michael. Yeah, I think Sorry. he said something along the lines of, "I can't, I can't exactly remember." It was something like he can kind of play guitar. I think he said something like that about his brother. He can kind of <laughs> play guitar. Um, if you go back, if I go back and listen to it, well, I'll find no, it. I'm, that's what he said. But I'm man, he went to a that. total different place about how, yeah, the Scorpions totally screwed him over and how he was 17 and he didn't know yeah. any better. And they stole. So yeah, there's, there's definitely not a lot of love. There, no. there must be not very many good Christmas gathering or Thanksgiving. Things are a little icy around the Shanker household at Christmas time. <laughs> 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 Cool. All right, Nick. So for my last pick, um, I'm going over to England. Uh, the prog metal, post rock. I don't, I don't know what the hell you want to call it, but they're beautiful. Anathema. Uh, their 2003 album, Natural Disaster. <clears throat> the final song on the album is called Violence. Uh, it, it's it's like 10 minutes long. It, it starts out with this very simple piano 
uh, sort of intro and it just kind of like builds from there and it, it's a slow build and it crescendos this amazing powerful rush of uh, speedy drums on it almost like a uh, blast beat but it's I don't know you got to listen to it it's really really amazing and one of the reasons that I picked it up picking it you know best for last is because uh, when my daughter who's now 10 you guys have seen her pop down uh, on and off of here but um, when she was like uh, like four years old she used to like perk up whenever that if I played that um and she started to request it and she'd be like daddy play, play the one with no singing like play the one with no voice or something she would say she didn't know what it was called and she really really got into it and uh, eventually she started to pick up a little bit of the piano here and there um and she learned to play the piano intro to it and, and could yeah. actually play it pretty competently yeah so imagine what a thrill for me that my own little kid on her own was like wanted to learn this section so it really uh uh, means a lot to me so it, but it is a beautiful song and, uh, they always make really beautiful music i think i know Pete, you're into them and uh yeah so violence is just a gorgeous gorgeous uh song it builds with piano more than guitar but it, it all comes in and like makes sense in crescendos so uh yes violence and, <laughs> and choice, nick but... nick to yep. let you know i yep. have one of the records too so you might be surprised to know i have no, the, I, think... I have judgment oh cool oh yeah depressing wonderful record i love i love the melancholy yeah they wrote that album it's two brothers in the band the cavanaugh brothers and oh. they uh their mom was passing or got really sick and died like right around that album and uh the pain in that really comes out i think it was that one and then this was the one after okay. um yeah so th there's a lot of th they're they're on hold i don't know if they're um if, what their plans are if anything i haven't read anything but uh man i got to see them once and it was magic it was magic so yeah butch their last like three or four are really really good they're a little they're a little different though yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, was, yeah. that one's phenomenal holy shit that is yeah. yeah really really good good man yeah they're they're awesome all right ryan your your pick while you're getting the bath all right so I'm <laughs> hey, wait a minute your dog in. shrunk again what happened that no, <laughs> dog's smaller this, than this yeah. If you blink, you back. Like one, one goes, the other pops up. I put the other one down. They go back and forth, you know. You just take turns. So oh, well, I dream a genie thing, right? It's like <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can be holding both of them though. Like, have, do you ever like? Oh no! If I heard both, if I hold, if I held both of them, you would not hear anything else other than a ruckus. And yeah, oh. I have, to, I'd have to mute myself. So, uh, so I'm going to break the trend now of Butch having the stuff that me and Nick have played. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pick a band that nobody here has fucking heard of. Well, maybe you have. Probably not. Uh, so I picked this one last because they're an instrumental band. Everything they've done instrumental, every album, every song. Uh, and I love them. They're, they're a very weird band, but I don't think in an off-putting way. Uh, the band name, though, is very weird. So I'll just get that out of the way. The band is called the Flying Lutenbachers. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, probably not. No, fuck. No, it there, there it is. No, I can see it. This is the newest. Uh, this is their newest album. Sorry, I had it upside down, but it's an infinity symbol, so who fucking cares? Doesn't matter. Uh, it's called Negative Infinity. Uh, came out this year, and uh, so the, the main guy in the band. It's it's one of those bands where there's one guy, and you know every album puts together different lineups, different iterations. Uh, I describe it. I, I I describe it as like combat jazz. Like uh, I, it's it's a weird band to describe. But as soon as you heard it, it would it would click. So they, they have. Usually I have like a full jazz ensemble. Like on this album, he has a, uh, they have two guitars, a bass player, and the bass guitar is almost like Lemmy Voivod levels of distortion. But then they have a tenor saxophone. And usually on their stuff, the saxophone does a lot of the heavy lifting, carries a lot of the songs and stuff. But it's super aggressive, super high speed and fast. So it's almost like taking like Coltrane and Zappa and like ramming it through like Deicide. Like I, I it's hard to describe. Wow. So like Ishan. <laughs> Checking that out. Yeah. I like that. That sounds cool. They have, a, they have a ton of albums. And uh, like I said, every album's different lineup. Uh, the first time I heard them was because they covered a song by the French band Magma. Who the hell's got the balls to cover Magma? Because that's a weird band already. But they did a did a Magma song, a long one, a De Futura, and they nailed it. So I'm like, well, this is this is up my alley. And uh, so I'm just gonna pick the newest album. And the first song is called Fury of the Delusion. I'm just going to go with that because, every, like I said, everything they've done is instrumental. But yeah, it's like it's it's very musically robust and like composition compositionally robust. Uh, this guy, Chris Walter, his stage name is uh, Weasel Walter. He plays in a ton of jazz bands, ton of jazz ensembles, a lot of free jazz. 
there's like a hundred different projects besides this. This is his main band. Uh, and he kind of, you know, they, they come and go, you know, sometimes he'll have them active for a couple of years and they'll go inactive again. He'll do other bands. I got a lot of his jazz stuff and it's great. Uh, very intense jazz, a lot of free jazz. Uh, but Lutenbacher's with this band, it's more like, all right, this is time they're actually write some music. So this is composed compared to the improvisational stuff. But it still has that kind of free jazz, jazzy edge to it. You know, that like Ornette Coleman kind of stuff where it's very, I don't know, like flying off the handles kind of, but uh, in a controlled kind of chaos way. Uh, I just recommend checking them out because I don't know if I'm doing a good job describing them. Combat but, yeah. jazz. I just think about Combat jazz, jazz is cool. fighting so, each other. Like that's so, the first thing that came in my mind. Well, the thing is like, they'll take, they'll take band photos and everybody else he hires in the band, they're dressed like you might look in a jazz band or a rock band, like pretty normal. And then he's up there with, uh, you know, the guy, Walter, he's got like bullet belts, spikes, corpse paint, and like, you know, spiked bracers. So there he is in the middle there. And uh, yeah, I, I saw them at St. Vitus in Brooklyn, like two, two, three years ago. And he's up there with like a deicide shirt and I'm going, I'm going to talk to him. So we're talking about like old school death metal. And, you know, and obviously he's a very proficient jazz musician too. And that's most of what his day job is, is playing that kind of stuff. But he loves old school death metal and black metal. So it's like, uh, you know, kind of like a mix of both worlds. But yeah, you know, it's the only time I've seen like jazz albums where the guy's got like bullet belts and spikes and like fucking all this shit, you know. And then there's like a guy, you know, like a stand up bass and like, you know, tenor sax and alto sax and stuff. So eh, it's a little, you know, a little column A, a little column B. But, you, you know, Ryan, it's, it's, it, it brings to mind um, some of the clowns that comment on these videos trying to say that death and black metal has no talent. But, you know, I'd love for them to have a conversation with this guy and come well, out on the other side of that conversation. I'll tell you what, too. They have no when, I, when, I, when I was on social media, I followed him because he was one of those guys that were great to follow on social media because he just has, like, this endless well of knowledge about, like, all music. Like, not just heavy stuff, but, like, oh, and you throw up some random recommendation, you know, of, like, stuff. I'd never even fucking heard of this before, and it's always cool. So he just has, like, that font of knowledge, obviously a very talented musician. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been a huge fan of these guys for years, ever since I heard that Magma cover, bought all their albums. and uh, They're I've American? They are, they have... yeah. Uh, he's moved a couple times, but he currently lives in New York City. So uh, I've been lucky to wow. see them. A few I'm surprised times. I haven't heard of them. Yeah, they're, they're, well, the name is kind of, it's just a crazy name, the Flying Lutenbacher, so that's going to put people off. Right. But uh, yeah, if you're like a fan of like old school is, jazz, like Zappa, is, like he, in that, is he in that like John Zorn universe, that downtown sort of avant garde artsy jazz oh, yeah. knitting factory? I like, I don't know if he's in that crowd, but like musically, it's right in that like that John Zorn. Oh, world. that sounds yeah. cool. I like that cool. stuff. Yeah, you would definitely dig him because it's very heavy on the jazz, but it's it's like it's fucking intense. I got it so right cool. here on my list between Tony Iommi Cologne and Lamb Chop of God. I'm gonna check <laughs> that out. So this, I reckon, like this new album, uh, Negative Infinity. Like this is as good a spot to start as any. Uh, That's cool, man. It's just, it's, it's just great stuff. It's and it's intense. It's like headphones music, but it's like ah, you know, it has that vibe to it. So yeah, I saved them for last because like I don't know, they got like twenty albums and they're all instrumental. So I'm like, yeah, just first song on the newest album, good enough. So I'm going with the Flying Lutenbachers. Fucking awesome band. You say all that. You say all that. Snake like eating it. its own tail. What, oh, what's up, what's cool? Because so you say that, and all I can hear is, is, is Spinal Tap Jazz Odyssey. Tonight, we're going to give you the Jazz Odyssey. I know. Well, the the, the band name is to mine, so. Uh, the... Taking John Coltrane and ramming it through Deicide is the best thing yeah, anybody yeah, has ever said it, about it, anything. It, it sounds really very interesting. The word, but it's, I, you know what? If you listen to it, I, I don't think I'm far off. I think you'll see what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, definitely. All right, Steve. Now he's on mute. Are you on mute, Steve? Oh, the album, the there we go. Oh, there we go. From an island in the Pacific. Um, oh, he's not. Is Steve no. breathing? I actually go on with a band. Linda, can Solomon, you check him? Solomon Brothers. I don't know Put a mirror knows. under his nose. Solomon Are Brothers. you alive? What's that? Are you alive? Your, your, alive your mic still? is like... Your mic is cutting out big time. You will know. Maybe it's my internet. I don't know what it is then. Uh, now you're better. Now you're better. Good. Good. Maybe it's the internet. It's like a windstorm hey. going on outside the house. Still, there you but, go. Uh, yeah, it's just really big, take right? take two. Windy. Yeah. Yeah. Take two. I don't know. Maybe my computer is lulled into sleep after Ryan Scow's last uh, twenty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up before your internet goes out, Steve. <laughs> Yeah, I better. Right? Balti. Anyhow, I'm gonna Balti. go with a really obscure band that no one's heard of before. 
called the Allman Brothers. And the song is in memory of Elizabeth Reed. And I'm going to go with the version off of At the Fillmore East. And my back in the day of drinking and going to bars and we had the jukebox. And I was like, got, got a couple bucks put in the jukebox. That was always a great song to play because it was 13 minutes long and you got your money's your worth. Money's worth. <laughs> and uh, like that one a lot. And... I have to hop off here because I got a couple of things to do. Could I just give a couple honorable mentions before I go? Yep, go for it. Break the rule. I'm going to break the rules. A song I've had in my day is because I was talking about, I was thinking about instrumental songs. My mind immediately went back to the 60s and a band called Apollo 100 with a song called Joy. This, if no one's ever heard it, please go listen to it. Absolutely not. No one has ever heard of that one. <laughs> I, I once, but once you listen to it, once you listen to it, you're gonna say, "Oh yeah, you've heard it. It, it was on the radio a ton." And uh, hundred? No, it was probably on WABC. No, 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 no. Does that have like a does that have like a castanet piano? Like a like a um. I think like, I know it. I think I know it. I'm saying the name of the artist was Apollo 100. Apollo 100, yeah. Okay. Sometimes it went under just Apollo, but it's actually Apollo 100. Uh Mason Williams, the classical gas. Yep. Booker T and the one. MGs, the Green, green Onions. Uh, popcorn. Yeah. Yes. By Hot Butter. Fuck yeah, the best. And Sky loves popcorn. I and love the that Star song. Wars theme. And I could have, and I was looking at my list. I was looking at my list, and I there was another Frank Marino song I probably should have checked with Poppy. No, so far, no one's mentioned Eruption by Van Halen. Because it's not an instrumental. It's a guitar solo. But it's put. But it's listed as an instrumental. I said it's a guitar solo, God damn it! But it's listed as an instrumental in Moby Dick from Led Zeppelin. So, oh, and with that, I guess I'm out the door because I got a couple of things to take care of. And thank you all for having me on the of Tranquility tonight, everyone. See you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. I love your number one pick. It's also my number one pick in memory of Elizabeth Reed, Mullen Brothers, man. Excellent. Steve and I were on the same wavelength here tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's just an amazing song. I, was the, I, was, I don't think I had anything on here newer than 1977. I think the newest thing I had on there was uh, actually was Fails the Unexpected and uh, Star Wars theme, as I will mention. <laughs> All right, guys. Good to see everyone. All right, cool, Steve. Nice to nice meet you again, Joey Spaghetti. I think I I, I know you from somewhere. I'll see you Thursday. You, you know me. I know, I know you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll see you <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, you're coming in. All right. Thank you. See you. <laughs> Stared. The king of the north. King of the north. Ladies king of the me. king of the north. The north. Yeah, and Memory of Elizabeth Reed is my pick as well. Um, amazing song. 13 minutes. Got to go with the live version. <laughs> exactly. Everyone, everyone laugh at the elephant that just left the room. Weird. He was like kind of coming in and out. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like he's underwater. <laughs> oh, boy. My head, that's how we always sound. <laughs> That's just how his voice normally is to me, so I'm used oh. to it. Oh, that was that was gold. I was that was that hard in a while. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so Steve. Funny. Rice, you and Spaghetti picked a good episode to show up on. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Allman Brothers, my number one. All right, I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna list my honorables and then we'll just kind of go backwards real quick. So I got also uh, Jeff Beck because we've ended as lovers from Blow by Blow. I've got uh, Def Leppard, Switch 625. Uh, oh, Pete God. Willis. Damn, how did I yes. forget that? And uh, I know Steve was kind of talking about it, but Sparks from The Who, specifically from uh, Live at Leeds. Nice. And uh, yeah, yes. Rush, YYZ, La Villa Strangiato. Yep. And how about Foreplay by Boston? Yeah, 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 that counts. Yep, that counts. Dun, 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 dun. So that's mine. Those are mine. Uh, spaghetti, what do you got? For honorable mentions? Yes. 
Um, okay. I had uh, Jeff Beck too. Latter day Jeff Beck is really cool. It's really, really heavy. I mean, after uh, he had an album in 2010, 2009, 2010, you had it coming was an album. Mm-hmm. The albums he's done since then, they're really, really heavy, man. I mean, it almost sounded like ministry. I really like it. So Jeff Beck, you had it coming. Um, and to just keep the variety in the styles here, uh, I want to throw in a jazz fusion, sort of a funk, uh, Herbie Hancock, Hang Up Your Hang Ups. Very cool, very funky, very jazzy. And just so um, you guys could start making fun of me and not Bryce so much and the lovely young lady, um, I'm going to throw in a disco tune. Okay, guys, Machine Gun by the Commodores. I'm sorry. I'll take the heat on that. But, That's a good song. Oh, but, but is, now, wait a minute now. Is that a disco song or is that a funk song? That's a I disco think, funk song. That's kind yeah, of funny. Funny. Well, no, no, the Herbie Herbie Hancock is jazzy funk, and exactly. Machine Gun Commodores is kind of disco funk. I think now, I'm kind of saving funk. you because I, I I would call that on the funk side, and you can't fuck with funk. That's a whole. That's a whole. <laughs> disco is a whole nother thing. Funk is funk is badass, man. Spaghetti. The first music my parents I, ever I like played funk. in the house was disco when I was born in '76. So. I remember all that stuff, and it was it yeah. Got me, on me the too. Bed. My earliest memories. I have yeah. a, I have a, uh, a sort of a sentimental appreciation for it. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't have an issue with disco either. I like the goddamn Bee Gees. Don't even you I won't get me. Bee Gees, I love the Bee Gees, Bee Gees are different. Yeah. Bee Gees are great. Yeah, love, yeah. yeah. love that shit. Kind of summer. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Right, you got a couple. Uh, uh, I do. Yeah. Uh, Ted Nugent first, you know, the mighty Birdland hibernation here. This version is just oh, yeah. in- incredible. It's originally on Tooth Fang and Claw 74 with uh, the Amboy Dukes, but yeah. this I'm version, cool. this is yeah. the first vinyl I ever got. I think oh, back, it's way, great. Way, way back in like 2012, you know, <laughs> I picked it up. <laughs> nice. Way, way back, man. Way back. Way back. <laughs> That's old school. Um, they had record players then? I, they did. They, they, they crazy. Didn't, they didn't, no, record <laughs> they didn't, players yeah. went around in 2012. They didn't come back till 15. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> but um, one I'm surprised that nobody mentioned yet, uh, Voice of the Soul by Death. Yeah, it's just oh, it's yeah. a beautiful. It's just a beautiful song you wouldn't really expect from a death metal band. Never got it. Uh, I mean, you'd expect it from death. Anybody that knows Chuck is just a mastermind. But uh a couple of new bands or newer bands, Skull Fist, got to throw them out here. Amazing stuff. Uh, the song is called Shred's Not Dead. It's a great, super shreddy song. And um, In Control by Vinnie Moore from the Mind's Eye album. Whole album's oh, great. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. yeah. Love that. You got Tony McElpine on keyboards, like basically just shredding on keyboards, which is crazy. Uh, uh, the drummer was, uh, uh, who was, who was on drums on that album? I forget his name right now. Uh, which, Aldridge. Which Tommy, Tommy Aldridge. Yeah, Tommy. On uh, Mind's Eye, yeah. Oh, Mind's Eye, yeah, yeah, Mind's yeah. Eye, yeah. Yep, yep. And uh, Diamonds by Enforcer, another great new band. But, I love Enforcer. Yeah. They're great. That's all I got. Cool. Let's pick Chris. Thank you. Uh, Captain Nemo and Into the Arena from yep. uh, Michael Shanker. Yep. Uh, Difficult to Cure from Rainbow. Yes. Uh, this is another new one. Uh, Samson and Delilah from the new Accept record. I really like that track. Oh, yeah, that is and, good. Um, on the new my, record. Yeah. My favorite uh, Rush instrumental is um, Leave That Thing Alone, but I accidentally grabbed uh, Where's My Thing. But I, I don't really like that one, but I really like um, uh, Leave That Thing Alone. I really like that one. That's, and that's all I got. That was a good one. Cool. Sydney, you got any? Do we skip Butch? Oh, sorry. My oh. Steve left oh, and I, my room got all mixed up. All right. I, 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 yeah, I just, I, just, I was just waiting for you to call people's names out. I didn't know you were going in any order. No, I, I just know the order we even go. That's the only reason I said that. Oh, go ahead, Sid. Go ahead, Sid. You got it. Okay. Um, so I had Into the Arena as well. Um, Chris is just on top of it tonight. Difficult to Cure is a great one. Um, I had Black Star as well. And then Mozart and Madness by Sabotage too, um, which is kind of a... a one that I thought of, I really like that one a lot, um, and pretty much everything else that could possibly be on there has been mentioned. So. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. All right, Butch. Now, now we get to Butch. I didn't write anything extra down because it's just too fucking much. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just to kind of throw a, a couple out there, um, anything from my 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 one of my great buddies Jeff Coleman, um, who is a guitar god, um, who's got one of the greatest guitar tones out there. Um, anything that he's got from his band Cosmo Squad, 
every their, their instrumental records are phenomenal. And he also has a band with Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Uh, um, Jesus, now, uh, oh my God. I, I totally just spaced on the name. Oh yeah, it's just Chad Smith. It's Chad Smith and the Bombastic Meat Bats, which is a great fucking name all by itself. Um, that stuff is kind of on the fusion rock tip. Um, just awesome. Uh, Alan Holdsworth, the song uh, Metal Fatigue. I, I love that. But yeah, I mean, one of my probably, maybe even maybe my favorite instrumental album period is by Blue Saraceno, the album Plaid. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. That record does not get talked about enough. He's that is some of the greatest guitar playing. I think that record's either from 92 or 94. I forget what year it is. But uh, that is some of the greatest guitar playing ever. The tone is phenomenal. Blue Saraceno. I mean, he, he made a decision to kind of get out of the whole guitar shred, guitar hero thing. And is doing a lot of, uh, 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 I guess, soundtracking for TV and movies and stuff. But... He is a motherfucker of a guitar player, man. And his three solo records are just tremendous. So if anybody out there does not know Blue Saraceno, I will tell you very, very highly to check out his three solo records. Just unbelievable. All from the early 90s, late, late 80s going into the early 90s. Tremendous. Before he went and joined Poison. Uh, brilliant, 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 brilliant stuff, man. Everyone should be talking about him with everybody else when he talks about this instrumental thing. Great stuff. And of course, the and that, was those are the 11 Stevens album is pretty damn good, too. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Black Light Syndrome, man. God yeah. damn. Yeah, that's a, yeah that's a great one. And especially knowing that they went in and just kind of all off the cuff. That's, man, that's, yeah. yeah. You're damn right, man. And that was recorded around here. That was recorded in Millbrook. Millbrook, of all places, yeah. Yep, Millbrook, New uh, York. Yeah, Tony's from around here, anyway. Yep. So. Nick, you got any honorables? Oh, I do. Um, so, uh, first one, 1776 by Ice Earth. Um, yeah, so something mm -hmm. this way comes with that great yeah. flute line through there. Um, the Cruel Sea by Primordial, one of my, my favorite bands. Uh, uh, a guitar lead just teasing through, like sounds of like the ocean and stuff like that. Uh, really, really melancholy. Oof. Amazing. Um, off the latest Moonspell record, the album uh, is called Hermitage, Hermitage, and the song is called Solitarian. Uh, really, really beautiful guitar noodling, but just takes you on the journey. Wonderful. And then um, lastly, I'd just like to give a collective shout out to a lot of my death and black metal bands, especially the ones from Scandinavia and places like that. Uh, no matter how heavy and chaotic and uh, the last thing uh, their regular music is, they, they all seem to have had this like neoclassical knowledge. So a lot of them would incorporate these, uh, I guess they're more instrumental interludes, um, but they're, you know, some of them three, four or five minutes long of uh, neoclassical, you know, with, with piano and it just sounds like an orchestra and it can be creepy and sound like, you know, a horror soundtrack, but you, you get into uh, bands like Lombonic Art and they have the song Arctic Odyssey. Um, no Dreams Breed in Breathless Sleep by Deception. It's a piano. It's one of the most heartbreaking, beautiful piano songs you'll ever hear in your life. It's right. so, right? And it's just, and then the rest of the album is, is you know, pretty much black metal. Um, a Serenade for the Dead by Edge of Sanity, another gorgeous psychedelic journey in the middle of this death metal album. And lastly, and best, Opus A Satana by Emperor. Uh, Reimagining of their song Inno A Satana but this is just like neoclassical brilliance on a level that, that I just don't even know where to begin. So those are mine. <laughs> cool. <laughs> right, Butch, you know it. And you know what, before you, before you move on, I just thought of one that has to be mentioned, going with Ryan back to Canada. I can't believe that I actually didn't think it is earlier. Anvil's March with the Crabs. Oh, yes. Right? Chef's right? kiss. <laughs> Chef's Kiss. That's a, That's a great song. song. <laughs> well, on their best album, too. Yeah. Metal on Metal. Oh, see, I, I like Forest and Fire better. That's the second best album, but I kind of <laughs> like it. Right there. Weed. Ryan, you got any Ryan? Oh, I thought of, I uh, had one, and I thought of a second one, because uh, Spaghetti mentioned the Commodores, so that brought my favorite uh, funk instrumental to mind, oh. which is uh, Sissy Strut by The Meters. Fucking love it. Uh, great oh, song. It's a nice, simple... 
groovy, good sitting on, you know, just relaxing in the summertime, hanging out, uh, just one. having a beer. It's a great, great song. So uh, Sissy Struck by the Meters. And then the other one, I'm going to go whoop, completely other side of the spectrum. Uh, I'm going to go from their newest full-length album, uh, Destroyer 666. So I <laughs> Of course. Uh, surprise, surprise. They have a song. They waited almost 20 years into their career to record a proper not like interlude or anything, but a proper instrumental metal track. And it's Artigilio del Diavolo. And uh, it's the third song on the album. And it's just, it's, it's, it's musically like the rest of the album, but kind of like what Iron Maiden always did, which is, you know, the instrumental track, they kind of give a little more, uh, I want to try to find the right language to say here. They give a little more emphasis to things in, to make up for the lack of vocals. So the music kind of tells that same story. Yeah. Uh, these guys did the same thing. And the instrumental track really, it carries you along this little path and it's great. And the fact that it's the third song on the album kind of reminded me of uh, Lost for Words, which was the third song on Power Slave. So it uh, kind of gave me that feel a little bit, even though it doesn't sound like that, but you know, you know how the brain works. So uh, the meters and Destroyer 666, that's it. Fabulous. Oh, and, and I thought of one more because someone will mention this in, in the comments at some point that none of us mentioned this song, Maggot Brain from, from P-Funk. Yeah. Eddie yeah. Hazel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Eddie Hazel. I thought of it. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a ton we haven't oh, mentioned. Oh, I mean, there's just so many ones. Yeah, you know? No one mentioned Joe Satriani, so we'll get killed about that, you know. Yeah. So Pocus, Pocus, Focus. Oh shit. I, I forgot all I wow. There you go. John yeah. Ackerman, you're absolutely right. God damn. Yeah, we definitely yeah. would get killed about that one. Yeah, there's, there's a ton. ton by Europe. There is a ton. Yeah. Crystal Ann. Crystal Ann, Annihilator. Yeah, that's a good one too. Oh, yeah, that's a great one. That's Jeff cool. Waters just a master. Hocus yeah. Pocus. How did I forget that? <laughs> wow. Lock on. Can't, can't remember them all. Can't remember them all. So, in closing, uh, I was going to do a separate show, but I figured since we ran really long. So, uh, a good chunk of us went to see Except the other night in the Minnesota Civic Center. I mean, no, sorry, at the Chance. It's getting late. <laughs> at the Chance of Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, the other night. Great show. Uh, it was great to see all of you and, and Sydney. Great to see you in person for yeah. the first time. I know. I know. So tall. Was hot, right? Oh, oh my God. I heard, I heard that like 20 times the other night. I said it first. It was I tall in real life. <laughs> Listen to Nick. I said it first. <laughs> yeah. It's just so weird when you like spend so many, I mean, you know, most of us know each other for many, many years, but when you like spend all this time virtually every week, week in and week out, yeah. and then you get to see each other in person, uh, maybe for the first time in a long time or first time ever, it's just, it's really, really cool. So the yeah, show was yeah. great. Um, but it was, more importantly, it was great seeing all of you and, uh, you know, doing Absolutely. what we normally used to do all the time. Right. So, uh, and the show was packed. So if anyone's wondering about how, how the yeah. it was, it was packed. It was oh, really, really, really good turnout. Yeah, good That's turnout. Great band to see. Yeah. The yeah. band was great. It was really good. They interesting. You know, they're only playing the couple dates, but uh, they played a pretty much a eighty percent of the set was mostly songs from the Mark Tornillo era. Uh, yeah, it was, it was nine people of, of you know old classic I, tracks. I have the set list. It was still with me. It was yeah, nine. Why don't, you, why don't you read them off, Chris? Yeah. All right. They opened oh. with uh, Zombie Apocalypse. And they did Too Mean to Die, Restless and Wild, London Leather Boys, Overnight Sensation, No Regrets, The Undertaker, Final Journey, Shadow Soldiers, Princess of the Dawn, Midnight Mover, Pandemic, and the last song of the set was Fast as a Shark. They came back and the encores were Metal Heart, and then I, I left, and then, but the typical last two on cars are teutonic terror and balls to the wall yeah so i'm assuming they they did those two with the chance yep. so yeah it was it was nine yep. mark songs and seven uh udo songs which i thought was i would have preferred eight and eight myself or maybe nine udo and, and seven mark tornillo songs but uh i thought it was really gotta be nitpicking but i thought it was really good i mean i've seen them once on each uh record for the new you know, since Mark joined, so is that is this five records now? Yeah, I, I think, think so. Five, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, I saw them at M3, the little, like, festival in Maryland. Oh, back right. In, yep. in July. Right. It was kind of weird with them on that bill with, like, Enough's Enough and, like, Hurricane yeah. and shit like that. It was it was really good, though. It was a great show. They put on yeah. they put on a really great show this weekend. Yeah, so Sydney, show that, uh, show that signature off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Me, me and Nick and oh, nice. on the front. Yeah, That's the really awesome. funny thing is that no regrets on on the set list from Phil said no regrets. No regrets. Uh, no regrets. Awesome. So, so we should tell them, Sydney, about how that came to be. So I realized that Sydney wanted yeah. the, uh, the shout to shout out to Nick for literally climbing. <laughs> yeah. So I realized that Sydney wanted the, the set list. So I was like, you know what? Sydney came all the way up here. We finally met. Everybody's together. I'm getting her that set list. So I jumped like sort of onto the stage, but like afterward, like right there. And I, all I was thinking about was getting the set list. And then once I got the set list, I realized that I had no game plan. And <laughs> if it wasn't for Ryan pulling me back down, I, it would have, I'm probably still there right now. So um, thanks Ryan for helping me get Sydney. Oh, set list. Thank you. Work. This is like, I was so excited about this and I'm, I love, I love, stuff like this and set list. I have a whole bunch of them and I was just telling Nick last night I want to try to get a bunch of them framed and everything so uh it's definitely appreciated all, cool. all the trouble nice about three quarters yeah, of the way through awesome. the, oh yeah they're always great live they're always really good they're awesome about three quarters of the way through the show uh because we were over on kind of like the left side of the venue Butch comes walking over and we're hanging out a bit he goes where's everybody else I was kind of expecting everybody to be here and I'm like oh they're they're down down below so I think Butch thought they were like down, like, you know, not all another the level. And he goes down and all of a sudden he sees Sydney and Nick and Ryan all the way in front of the stage. He goes, they're all the way down there in the pit. And that was that. <laughs> I'm not going down there to see them. Oh, I've done my guy, time the guys with the olds were in the back. <laughs> exactly. I put my time in already in the eighties. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Cool. But yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. Yeah, it, was. Yeah. it was a really good time. Absolutely. So thanks everybody for watching tonight uh, in the comments below, please add in some of your favorite instrumental rock or metal tracks, uh, you know, whatever you want, whether it's bands that purely do instrumental music or like more vocal bands that occasionally drop out an instrumental. So remember, there's no right or wrong answers. I want to thank Spaghetti Lee for joining us tonight. And I want to thank Ooh. Bryce from Bryce Talks Metal. Make sure you go over to Bryce's channel Ooh. for some love. And uh, thanks to the crew here, as always. We got uh, Butch Jones, Butcher Shop on Facebook. We got Sydney yes, Taylor, sir. Metal from the Inside. Check that out. We've got Ryan Scow and Nick Franco. And, of course, Mr. Chris Allo, the King, joining me on Thursday night for um, the Monsters Den. Make sure you uh, – are we doing what we're planning on doing Thursday? You haven't heard yet. I think we're doing aquatic metal. I, I mean, sorry, aquatic, aquatic car. Aquatic. I, I just, I just could have created a, a, a new genre. You just aquatic did. Metal. Aquaman thrash, man. Aquaman. We had puppet metal earlier. Now we got aquatic uh, metal. Look at that. Aquatic yeah, metal. I know. I'm sorry. I meant to say aquatic horror. <laughs> so tune in Thursday night at the Monsters Den where uh, we've got uh, Chris and myself along with uh, Craig Kaminsky. We're going to be uh, talking about our favorite aquatic monster movies. So yeah, those are monster movies with fish, fish monsters or, you know, or monsters that live under the sea. So uh, that's coming up on Thursday. And uh, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all we're the damn the time. time. Um, time. This Allo, Spaghetti Lee, Bryce from Bryce Talks Metal, Nick Franco and family, Sydney Taylor, Ryan Scow and Butch Jones, I.M.P. Pardo. Good night, everybody. See you next week. Good night.